Ever since I was five years old, I've had an extreme fear of dolls. I am terrified of them. Now, I know that there are a lot of people who are, but when I reached the age of about 16, my mother finally told me where my fear may have come from. It's from a personal experience. To this day, I can never fully answer whether I believe in the paranormal or not, but my personal experience with a doll given to me by an aunt who practiced black magic haunts me until this day. When my mom told me this tale, I had minor flashbacks of the feeling that I had with this specific doll. From the first day I was born, I never slept properly, never did, never have, and probably never will. I didn't cry or anything when I was awake early. I would just quietly play with my hands and wait for my mom to come get me. I did this from when I was an infant until I was a toddler. Around age five, we had an aunt from my biological father's side visit us. Now, keep in mind that I have nothing to do with my biological father, and this aunt may have wished my mother harm. Fijians from that generation are typically very superstitious, and many of them believe in black magic. The things I began to do made us believe that there was something very wrong with this porcelain doll that she had given me as a gift. My mom began to notice that I would spend a lot of time with the doll. My younger brother, who would have been around one to two years old at that time, spent a lot of time with my mom. I was a very jealous child when he was first born, so at first, she wasn't too surprised that I spent my time away from them. One morning, she came to my bedroom and was surprised that I wasn't there. Like I said before, no matter what time I was awake at, I never got up without her. We had a basement that my brother and I were strictly forbidden from opening and going into, because the stairs were spaced quite far apart, and being small, we could easily have fallen through or down onto the concrete. She had a lock put up on the high door, just in case. Besides that, the basement was freaky as hell, and I never even wanted to go in there alone. Ever. This particular morning, along with noticing that I was not in my usual place waiting for her, she noticed that this freakish doll wasn't there either. Before she called out my name, she heard me sniveling downstairs. As she climbed the stairs down toward me, she saw that doll sitting on the couch. She heard my crying get louder. As she got closer, she saw that I was trying to open the basement door lock while crying. Sharissa, what the heck are you doing? Didn't I tell you to never go down there without me? I started screaming and crying and ran to bury my face in her dress with relief. Such relief that she was there to stop me. I kept telling her, Mommy, the doll made me, the doll made me, through my tears. I have no idea what this doll's name is anymore, but I apparently was saying the name of the doll instead of the doll. My mom, who is not a believer, was thoroughly creeped out, because she said that my tears and hysterical crying were not that of a child trying to find an excuse for getting caught doing something bad, but actual relief of being saved. She packed me up and we were off to my grandma's house, without the doll. We got rid of that doll stat. I know that this is a hard story to believe for anybody. I probably would have just played it off as me being a child and trying to blame the doll for getting caught. But I know that I never dared to get up without my mom because I was scared to get up by myself and I liked the attention of her coming to get me out of bed every morning. I also have very creepy memories of some things about that doll that I'm still too scared to even think about let alone write down. We have this toy that has a dozen different phrases. I'm home alone, and it says, I can see you. Not once, but twice 
in about 10 minutes or so. I don't know all the phrases that it's programmed to say, so I can't say that that's not one of them, but I do know that nothing was touching it, so there was zero reason for it to go off. It's pretty new, so I also doubt that it's failing batteries, but even if that was the case, why hasn't it been making other sounds? Also, I can see you is about the creepiest phrase I can imagine, especially when it happens twice in about 10 minutes without anything being near it to set it off. I have no idea what to do with this thing. I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but what I do remember will forever be ingrained in my memory. I was a wee little kid, around five to six years old, and I used to live in a three-story blue house with my mom and dad. We had some birds and black cats as pets, and the house was down the street from the infamous Mummy Museum. I can't remember the name of it since I haven't gone back ever since my mom and I left. I remember on the weekends, if I was asleep early in the morning, my mom would go to the farmer's market and try to make it back before I woke up. This one time, I remember I woke up after she left, and I noticed there was a clown doll standing on its own, looking out the window toward the street. I got up out of bed, put it away in a toy chest-like dresser thing, went to the bathroom, and as I was walking back to bed to turn on the TV, the doll was in the middle of the floor, sitting facing the hallway that leads to the bathroom I had just come out of. That same night, I remember we had one of the nastiest rainstorms, with hail and thunder and lightning. I was able to fall asleep pretty early, even with the sound of thunder rumbling every inch of our house. I can't remember the exact dream I was having, but I remember trying to scream for help and running away from something. And no matter how loud I felt I was screaming in my dream, nobody could hear me. I remember waking up panting, crying, and trying to scream for my mom, but nothing came out. My heart dropped. I cried even more, and as lightning lit up the house, I got a glimpse of the creepy clown doll sitting upright on the living room table with a menacing grin on its face, a grin that it didn't have before. I believe the doll was possessed. I have no recollection of how I got it. I told my cousins, and they said that they had similar experiences with objects in their house. They lived a few houses away from mine, on the same street. I still don't have any explanation for what I encountered with that doll as a kid, but all of us seem to think that it might be connected to that museum. My dad died when I was 11. Every summer, we went to a little town which has a porcelain doll museum. I loved going there, hanging out with my dad, and I had several dolls myself. But the one that I loved the most resembled an Indian girl with two braids. I kept it on a shelf that was facing my bed, pushed into the corner of it. I had it for like three to four years. I didn't touch it not even once. I just admired it. As I mentioned, my dad died in December. Fast forward half a year later, it's June, summer holidays, and I'm laying on my bed with my laptop, chatting with my friend at midnight. Both my door and window were open, but it was quiet outside. No wind, nothing. And the doll suddenly fell to the floor. I was startled by the noise, but confused since it didn't shatter. The shelf was nearly two meters high, I think. So I turned off the lights, covered myself in a blanket, and went to sleep, hoping that I could. The next morning, the doll was still on the ground, face down, and I started to think. 
How could it fall? It was protected from wind, even though there was none, and there was a 40 centimeter empty space in front of it. I got up, shaking, and slowly approached it. I sat on the floor and picked it up. The doll was intact, except for one thing. The left braid was cut in half. Not torn, cut. I quickly put it away, and I never touched it again, nor have I even looked at it. I still don't really know what happened. I tried to think that it was my dad to comfort myself, but as I grew older, that doesn't seem logical. Why would my dad, who loved me the most, try to hurt my favorite doll that he gave me? I've always had a life filled with paranormal events, or so my religious mother tells me. Much of those I don't remember personally, but I don't doubt her. That and, well, the stories she tells me aren't evil paranormal, just casualties and me seeing my grandpa and uncle around when they had long been dead. But it was a nice encounter, according to her. The only thing I personally remember, and I still have the image of it stamped into my memory, is this one. So to this day, I have full baskets of plushies, dolls, and signature action figures from way back when my younger brother and I were obsessed with collecting and playing with them. I also used to have a gray dog. I don't remember the breed, but he was around the house a lot and his name was Hobbs. Our goal was to have our cast of characters. Funny enough, we made up our characters and completely dismissed the physical appearance of the toy, often referring to dinosaurs as Sonic characters, for example. The room was always messy, because we would spend literal hours just moving the toys around and doing voices for them. We moved all around the room in doing so, and time flew by. We never cleaned our room that same day. One day after a play session, we were told to clean up after the mess we had done the other day, and so we did. I crouched to see below the bed, and midway through, something moved. I swear on my life, I saw this thing sliver around, like if it was my dog, Hobbs, crawling out from under the bed. Instinctively, I greeted him and waited for him to come out, as he normally would, but he didn't. I quickly ducked further to see what was going on, and I found that what had moved was a plushy toy. I couldn't speak for a moment, and I just glared at my brother across the room, hoping that he had somehow seen it. He heard me say the name of our dog and was equally surprised that the dog was in the room as we would often close the door. Being the older brother, I didn't want to scream and run out of the room in horror, because I knew that that would really set the alarm off for my brother. He was really sensitive to the paranormal, and he never coped with it well. So I just told him to get out with me, and we played some Wii afterward. I didn't pick up this gray plush until the night time. This is a little bit blurry, though, I think he may have picked it up because I don't remember confronting what I saw myself. I still vividly remember how it moved, simply slithering forward by thumbing itself side to side, just like a dog would. It was the villain from the first Kung Fu Panda movie, so his back, the side I saw, was spotted and gray and looked exactly like my dog's paws. I swear he moved and I even went to confess it to my brother once we were way, way older, past the point of minding that we no longer had an option for a plushie to play with. He believes me, but simply because I'm honest. I feel that he doesn't really measure what I saw. Remember how I talked about my mother speaking to me about how I saw dead relatives? It turns out that she had a brother that died at age two due to heart complications. She told me this many years after we had stopped playing with dolls. To keep it simple, 
What happened was that another mess was made in my room, but my mother wanted me to pick up things as fast as possible because guests were coming, and for some reason they wanted to come and check me in my room. At this time I was two years old, so my brother hadn't been born yet. It was just me playing. She said that I did so, so she left the room, and when she came back, she saw me with a much worse mess than before. She got mad and asked why on earth I would just undo what I'd been doing for an hour. I had told her that Uncle Raphael had arrived to play with me, that same uncle that died at the age that I was, that my mother hadn't even mentioned to me yet. She still hasn't come up with an idea of how I could just know his name out of thin air, so she truly believes that I saw a kind, gentle infant spirit who knew who I was and just wanted to play. The phrasing of it kind of scares the crap out of me now, especially after I connected it with the events of that plushy moving. I do feel like it was probably him again, because it was the last time I ever saw my toys moving. Nothing ever came of it, because, like I said, he was a kind ghost. I didn't have nightmares or troubles picking up plushies or playing with them or sleeping in the same room where it was. The plushie is still lying around, somewhere in my brother's room, in his closet. But he's never told me or my mom about having any trouble sleeping in there. Had it been a malicious spirit, I think things would have been different. I'm pretty sure that this was just my uncle. And each day that passes, I wonder if he's really still with us. Being more cautious, now that I can spot and react accordingly to the paranormal. Recently, I've been reading some other stories and I was reminded of something that happened to me a while ago. Once a year, my parents go on vacation together somewhere in the United States, usually to the Bahamas or to Florida. They leave me in charge of the house with my dog and they like for me to check in on my Nana who lives in our basement. Normal, right? There's another important bit of background information. My dad takes part in this weird golfing competition with his friends, where if somebody wins a certain amount of holes, they get to take home this creepy doll as a sort of trophy. I don't know why, but I'm guessing it's some running gag. Well, my dad won the competition, and he brought it home before he left. I'm not at all scared of dolls. In fact, before he left, I slept with it beside me as a joke. It was basically an old baby doll with a missing eye and a brown dress. I don't know the origin of it and I didn't really bother to ask. November rolls around and my parents leave for their vacation. Everything goes normal for a little while, but then things start to get really weird. Because I'm the stereotypical little brother, I put the doll on my sister's bed, who's in university, and I took a picture to send it to her, as a joke. She hates dolls. So I leave the room with the doll still in there and head into my room just to send the photo and move on with my life. A few minutes later, I hear a massive bang. I jump, startled, and I go to look into the hallway. The door to my sister's room has slammed shut. Now, our hallway has no opening windows and there wasn't any kind of draft. Even if there had been, that bang sounded forceful. A little on edge, I open her door, and I see that the doll has fallen, face forward, even though I left it sitting upright and slightly back. I thought it was weird, but I brought the doll back into my room and moved on. That night, I'm sleeping normally in my parents' room. I have to sleep in there while my parents are away, because I have to keep an eye on the dog and she refuses to sleep anywhere else. I wake up suddenly in the night, which is odd for me. I usually sleep all the way through the night. I check the time and I see that it's around 3 a.m. This immediately freaks me out because I read that this is the witching hour, as it were. 
I glanced over at my dog, and she's awake too with her head up. Also strange. I put on my little puppy voice and ask the dog if she needs to pee, but she just stares back at me and then looks to the closet. I look to the closet too, and I see that it's open, even though I very much remember shutting it before going to bed. I quickly turn on the lamp and get out of bed to close the door. I don't even bother looking inside. My teenage brain still thinks it's a ghost and that that's far more likely than an intruder. So I get back in bed, scroll on my phone a little bit and finally fall back asleep. I wake up the next morning as usual to feed my dog. But when I go into the hallway, I see that my bedroom door is open. I always close my door when I'm not in my room. Now it's still dark out because I have to feed my dog at around 6 a.m. or she throws a fit. I look inside my room, turn on the light, and that doll is on the floor. I left it on my bed. I remembered the last night and now I'm feeling paranoid, but again, I just put the doll back on my bed and left, deciding to just have my door open. After feeding my dog, I went back to sleep an extra couple of hours. And that's when the most frightening thing happened. I was woken up by a loud banging sound. Loud enough to wake me, the heaviest sleeper in my family. I quickly got up and ran downstairs, my first thought being that maybe my Nana had fallen in the basement and was banging for me to help her. But when I got downstairs, I realized the banging was coming from the balcony door. I saw the glass shaking as if something was hitting it from outside. The banging was so loud that it was shaking the counters. The strangest part is that my dog was just standing in front of the door, staring at it. And she's the type of dog who will start barking if a mouse farts. I'm really shaken up at this point. It's completely still outside, no wind at all. I text my parents and tell them what's going on, and as soon as I do, the banging stops. They tell me it's probably nothing and not to worry about it. I went downstairs to see my Nana, but she had no idea what I was talking about. Then again, she's almost completely deaf, so it didn't surprise me that she couldn't hear it. She can't even walk up the stairs, so there's no way that she was causing any of this. That was the last weird incident that happened. The next week, my parents got back. I didn't tell them everything that happened because I didn't want them to think I was a chicken or something. Needless to say, I moved the doll out of my room until my dad brought it back to his golf team. Nothing strange happened after that. I still have no idea what went on during those couple of days, but it certainly was strange. I sort of wonder what the story behind that doll is now, but I don't think I really want to know. When I was younger, my church took a bunch of us kids to Toys R Us. They gave us a budget and we could buy whatever we wanted for Christmas. When we went, we all ran around with our parents and chose the toys that we wanted. I got a Barbie set with clothes and a car. I also got a Polly Pocket closet and a few of the dolls. I got a few board games also, and finally they said we had five minutes left. I was near the actual dolls, so I rushed, looking for one that had brown hair, like mine. I finally found one with just two minutes to spare. She had brown hair and bangs, and her hair was half up. She had on a pink shirt, a denim jacket with the same color jeans, and she had a little pink phone in her hand with painted buttons. There was also a button in the palm of her other hand that allowed her to talk, but there was no feature for her to move. It was just a basic doll. That was it. I reached for it and grabbed it, but my sister was also getting toys. She liked it too, so we fought for it. Our mom told us to share it, since it was the last one left, 
and we agreed. When we got home, we wrapped everything but the doll so we could open it and start playing. My sister and I ripped the box open and we played with the doll all day. When it was bedtime, we put her up on our bookshelf and went to sleep. I remember what happened because I woke up pretty late and automatically looked up at my bookshelf. The doll turned its head to look at me and moved its arm. I couldn't sleep all night watching it, so the next day I told my sister about it. She laughed at me. Nighttime came around again, and the doll had moved again. It moved its arms and head and was not on the bookshelf. My sister freaked out and couldn't sleep, and I freaked out and hid under the covers. The next morning we told our stepdad, and he laughed. He said, Oh, watch out, it's a Chucky situation. We brought the doll to him and told him to look at it. He jokingly started moving its arms and legs and then gave it back to us. We took it, and as soon as we did, it moved, so we threw it off the balcony. He went back down to get it, but then the doll moved in his arms, and he threw it over the balcony too. I have no idea what was going on with that doll, but we never picked it up again. I know the doll moved on its own, but it was brand new and had never been owned by anyone else at all. I don't know how it could have been haunted. To this day, I have no idea why that happened. I'll start by saying that I did not personally witness or experience this, but the story comes from a close family friend whom I consider reputable and honest. Personally, I'm rather skeptical when it comes to most paranormal activity, but I believe this story because of the man who told it. So as a little bit of background, my father was a police officer for 25 years through the 80s and 90s. His best friends were mostly officers growing up. I always met and was around cops. Some of my father's cop friends were annoying and rude, and some were really squared away nice guys. One in particular was my favorite. I won't use his real name, so I'll just refer to him as Bob. Bob was one of my father's closest friends and beat partner for a long time. He was an older African-American man from New Orleans. He was polite, had great mannerisms, and carried himself confidently. My father used to say he was the most honest cop he ever worked with and had solid integrity and bravery. One night, he and my father worked an off-duty job at a local event, some sort of carnival or fair. I can't remember exactly, but there was a clown there. My father told me the entire night Bob was acting strangely, acting uncomfortable, quiet, and shy. When my father asked him what was wrong, Bob just said, I hate clowns. I always have. My father started poking fun at him for being scared of the clown, and he said that Bob just stared at him with this look that he'd never seen him have before, like he was genuinely afraid. So my father asks why, and this is Bob's story. Bob grew up in New Orleans. When he was a child, his mom took him to stay at his aunt's house for a few weeks. Bob said that he didn't care much for his aunt. She wasn't mean to him, but he always got a strange vibe when he was around her as though she carried an evil aura with her. His family used to joke that his aunt was involved in voodoo and black magic, but they mostly just said these things in jest. His time at his aunt's was largely uneventful, with the exception of a strange rule she had. He was not allowed into the kitchen. Bob didn't understand why, but he followed it. On some nights, Bob claimed to hear his aunt talking to people in the kitchen at odd hours. In the mornings, he would question his aunt if she had friends over, and she would say that she didn't. 
His aunt had a thing for dolls. She had them all around the house. He hated them. He said whenever he passed by the cabinets displaying them, he always felt like he was being watched. But she had one doll that she always carried around and protected like it was some kind of treasure. You guessed it, a clown doll. He said his aunt loved this thing, always took it around the house, caring for it like it was a child. He didn't understand why. He said it was ugly and horrible looking and was the most frightening one that she owned. One night, he said that he smelled his aunt baking something sweet and conversing with someone. He got excited and ran into the kitchen without thinking about his aunt's single rule. When he ran in, he saw on the counter the clown doll moving its mouth and speaking to his aunt in a man's voice. The clown turned its head and looked at Bob. His aunt turned around frantically and scolded him out of the kitchen. He said that as his aunt rushed him out of the kitchen, he heard the clown doll laughing. After that night, he never left his room and barely slept. His aunt claimed that he was imagining seeing the clown talk. He never went back after the incident. My father, who's a big time paranormal skeptic, believes Bob. He said that he had never seen Bob's eyes or body language display so much discomfort and fear as he did when he was telling that story and when he looked at the clowns. He looked my dad square in the eyes and said, I know what I saw and I know how it sounds, but I'm telling you that it happened. That doll was alive. I'm still trying to figure out what I saw, or why I saw it. This is another paranormal account, like so many others of mine that took place when I was younger. The place that this event happened had many other unexplainable things take place in it. This is just one of the creepiest. I was probably 10 years old, and I was coloring by myself in my room. I heard a noise or something directly behind me, and when I turned around, there sat a ventriloquist doll. When I looked at him, he opened his mouth and eyes wide. I was completely frozen. When I finally could move, I ran into the living room where my mom and stepdad were. I don't think I said anything, but just sat on the couch, scared to go back into my bedroom. I never saw that particular item again. We had never owned a ventriloquist doll, and it never reappeared. But I did see other strange things, including my best friend, who I saw a spirit of in one room, when she was actually in another room at the same time. I have no idea why I saw this thing, or what it meant. But, to this day, I'm terrified of those dolls. This happened during my childhood in Matamoros, Tamaulipas. I lived with my family in a quiet neighborhood where everything went smoothly. I had a happy childhood. Due to the economic situation in the 1970s, many people were forced to migrate to other parts of the country or even to the United States in search of opportunities. For this reason, many houses were abandoned during the moves it was common for our former neighbors to leave forgotten things behind. So much was the migration in the area that for both my friends and I, one of our favorite games was urban exploration. We would go into the vacant houses with the desire to search through the garbage to see what kind of objects had been left behind. Of course, our main objective was toys. As we explored the adjoining houses, we had to expand to the point that we already had to ride a bicycle to find more abandoned houses. On one occasion, I don't remember the date, 
We were not five blocks from our houses when we saw an uninhabited house. It already had the for rent sign, and several large bags with forgotten objects had been left in the garage. We started to rummage through the bags, but among some crap, one of my friends found the head of a doll, one of those that open and close the eyes. The head was that of a baby, it had no hair, and had a happy expression, but when you were staring at it, you felt this inexplicable discomfort. It was very striking, as if someone wanted to tear it to pieces with an ice pick. Between jokes and games, we decided to take it with us, and we put it on a tree that was at the entrance of some soccer fields we used to go to. Since that day, we felt a very ugly vibe, in addition to being able to feel a heavy glance and stare. But not everything ends here, because for some strange reason, we were very attracted to it, so much that we even quarreled. I fought with my friend because I wanted to take it to my house and not leave it there. But the greed had not only erupted in me, but in all of my friends, each of us wanting to take it. Such was the extent of our disputes that there were days when we didn't speak. I felt a certain responsibility since I was the one who had started everything. So after reconsidering, I went to look for my friends to apologize to them and everything returned to normal. On one occasion, we were playing marbles and Mario, my best friend, exclaimed scared, the little head rolled its eyes. But since we already knew that it could open and close them, we did not give it importance. But Mario insisted again then we saw that the toy did not just open and close its eyes, but moved them from side to side and even blinked. Of course, we ran away in terror and we never stepped onto that soccer field again. After a few days, we got together again and decided what we were going to do with that thing. We had to get rid of it, but nobody had the courage to touch it. So we decided to go with an adult friend Two streets from where we lived, there was the house of a man named Valentin. He was very kind and used to play soccer with us. We knew his children, who were younger than us, because we had been invited to his birthday parties previously. We went to look for him. We knew at what time we could find him and we told him everything. Obviously, he did not believe us. We took him to the soccer field to show him the head. He took it, carefree, and watched it closely for a few minutes. Then he said, I'm taking it home. My daughter has some of her headless dolls. It will help me fix one. So he took the head, put it in a grocery bag and took it home. Days passed without incident and the tranquility returned in our circle of friends. In fact, we decided it might be safe to return to the soccer field. However, 15 days had passed since we last saw Valentin and we had never heard from him since. So we went to go look for him at his house. We got to his house and we were playing for half an hour, but nobody opened it. We could hear that the TV was on and we could see lights on inside the house. Even his truck was parked in the garage, but he would not come out to greet us. This seemed very strange to us. The subsequent days that we went to look for him, the same thing happened and we still did not hear from Valentin or his family. We discussed the situation with our parents and neighbors, but they didn't care. In fact, my mother told me that perhaps they had to emigrate like all the others. Concerned about this situation and without help from the adults, we decided to investigate on our own. We jumped over the fence and went inside his house. When we entered, we found the lights on in some rooms. The television was also on. And in fact, the dinner plates were still on the table and the food was still there. It honestly seemed as if all the family had just vanished since all their belongings were there. Their clothes, children's toys, even his wallet was up on the television next to his car keys. We left everything as it was and left the house with great fear, sensing that something bad had happened to them. We tried to see how to file a disappearance complaint with the police but this was impossible since we were minors. And when we were finally able to convince our parents to support us, the complaint could not be taken since we weren't related to them. 
Thus, the days became weeks, months, and we didn't stop searching. On one occasion, I was returning from school. I saw that there were people in Valentin's house. Thinking it was him, my heart filled with joy, and I ran to meet him. But when I reached the threshold of the door, I saw that they were different people. These people were family members who came after not hearing from them. The man said that he was Valentin's brother-in-law. After introducing myself to him, he asked me questions to find out if I knew anything about Valentin's whereabouts. I replied no. I accompanied him to ask the neighbors if they knew anything. And finally, a neighbor could give a reason. An old woman who lived in the house across the street told Valentine's brother-in-law that a few months ago, after nine o'clock at night, she heard a piercing scream that woke her up, and as the window of her room faces the street, she leaned out to see what had happened, but didn't see anything strange. Minutes later, she saw that Valentine rushed out and started the truck. Immediately after, he ran back to the house, and after that, she didn't know. The woman said that the car's engine was on all night, and around one in the morning, she heard the engine turn off. When the lady went out to carry out her daily activities in the morning, she saw the truck was still there, and when she heard the television on, she thought everything was fine. But ever since then, she's never heard from Valentine or his family. With the passage of time, Valentine's house also became an uninhabited house. For respect, we never went back in. However, other people did. First, the truck disappeared, then the appliances. Furniture was stolen, until it was completely empty. Over the years, the property was auctioned off, and new tenants came to live. My friends and I grew up, and each one made his own life. But to this day, I've never stopped wondering what happened to Valentine and his family, and if that doll's head had something to do with their disappearance. So, it's 6 a.m. right now. I couldn't really sleep after this. I first woke up at midnight, raised my head a bit, looked toward the door, and then realized that what had woken me was the really creepy voice of someone singing. Just by the sound of it, I could definitely tell that it was a doll and not a human. I was so tired that I didn't really realize what had just happened. The TV was on in the other room, so in my head, I thought it might have been coming from that. In my really tired state, I just told myself, hell, if I had to own a doll, I'd shit myself right now, and went back to sleep. Then at 2 a.m., I heard the same creepy singing. This time, the TV was off. Honestly, the more awake I was getting, the more I was questioning what was actually going on. I realized that I wasn't imagining it. So I've been sat here for four hours now, thinking about how fucking real this is. I even googled it in the hope that it happened to someone else before. I'm so creeped out. Just thinking about that moment, I know that it was there, just in the other room. I feel like I even know what this doll looks like even though I don't have dolls, and I've never seen it. I have no idea what's going on. On May 9th of this year, I went to a flea market to browse. I passed by a clear cabinet that held an assortment of old antique dolls, and I was particularly drawn to an old cracked doll wearing a hat with feathers. As I examined her closer, I noticed that she had a cloth body, but her arms, head, and legs were made of some type of plastic or possibly porcelain. I felt very drawn to her and was surprised by her price. 
only $35. She wasn't in very good condition, and is clearly rather old based on the cracks in her body and the way her face is painted on. I returned to the cashier with the doll, and immediately, the workers who had been deep in conversation halted and fell quiet. They proceeded to tell me a little more about the doll, who supposedly hexes anyone who inconveniences her. This only made me feel more inclined to purchase her. As someone who is very interested in the paranormal and it being part of my faith as a Wiccan, I wanted to see more, so I ended up buying her. My younger sister, who's 11, wasn't very happy that I had bought the doll, whose name was Madame Leonora. She felt very thrown off by the doll's presence, and requested that the doll be placed in the trunk on the ride home. I didn't want to upset the doll just in case I did get hexed, but my parents insisted that I put the doll in the trunk, so I did. That same day, I almost went to the hospital after an accident at my home. Similar disturbing events happened around the home whenever someone insulted Madame or did something she didn't like. These events pose a possible trauma trigger for some people, so I won't specify what they are. Just know that they were very serious and very awful. I began giving Madame gifts and saying good morning and good night to her every day. On the first day that I gave her a gift, a package I hadn't been expecting for another two weeks came in the mail. Every time I give her a gift, she gives me good luck. Madame and I had formed a friendship, but toward late June, I began having strange, very specific dreams. In these dreams, Madame would climb down off the shelf she lives on and escort me outside. We would light candles and perform a ritual, and then I would bury Madame in a box with the gifts that I had given her over the months. As soon as the dream ends, I wake up. So, with the knowledge I have because of my wicking faith, I decided to hold a seance of sorts in order to communicate with the spirit hosting my doll. I lit a candle and used a pendulum with a board to communicate. The candle flame responded to everything I said, and I've never seen such clear responses through my pendulum before. Based on what I got out of the session, Madame was able to tell me that she would like to be buried, but won't reveal to me why. I've never sensed any negative energy around Madame before, but with each passing day, the air in my room feels heavier, if that makes any sense. I'd like to fulfill her wish and bury her, because I think she might be a Victorian mourning doll, but the vendors who sold her have no information on her, only that she makes bad things happen. If she is indeed a Victorian mourning doll, it would make sense why she wants to be buried. The only problem is, she won't tell me why I have to do it. If anyone can tell me if there are any dangers in burying her, if there's anything I should know about this, or if there's anything I can do to identify what time period she's from, I would really appreciate the help. Update. I woke up this morning and was pleasantly surprised by the amount of attention and responses that I had received. I want to go through some more information on my experience with the paranormal, some events that have occurred while Madame has been in my home, and what I'll be doing with Madame based on research and the advice from the community, as well as trusted psychic mediums. To begin, I have been working with the paranormal for 10 years now. When my mother introduced it to me after she noticed my sensitivity to haunted places and objects, it became a part of my life. The first experience I ever had was very young, in the first home I ever lived in. It began when I started noticing shadowy figures around my home, and items would fall off the shelves or get lost. My mother came home one night with her sister after a ghost hunt in an abandoned buffalo jail, I believe. I didn't know where they had been, only that I had noticed a shadow enter our home behind them. I explained what I had seen, and that is when my journey into Wicca began. 
Not long after this experience, my mother decided to take me on a ghost hunt in St. Augustine. We went to the famed haunted lighthouse there. Throughout my journey, I felt a tugging toward a specific window, and was later told that a woman was often seen in that very window. I felt hands on my back and shoulders the entire time I was there, and my shoes kept coming untied. I was little then, so that first experience scared me for a long while, until I felt a pull toward a shop in Gettysburg while we were visiting on vacation. We bought some equipment to communicate with spirits near the Saks Covered Bridge, and while I was there, three spirits came into contact with me. A Confederate soldier, a Union soldier, and a little girl who had died in the house on the property. Each one connected with me through my emotions, and they expressed to me the pain they felt when they died. All of them didn't want to pass on, either for fear of the afterlife or the unwillingness to let their past life go. I returned to Gettysburg three times, and each time the spirits would connect with me and talk to me about their lives. After my first experience in Gettysburg, I decided to speak with two psychics, and both told me they believed that I was an empath. I embraced this after some research, and ever since, spirits have been twice as drawn to me. They come to me with their problems, and I do the best I can to resolve them. I never wanted to conform to a specific faith because of my many different beliefs about the afterlife, the paranormal, and anything spiritual until I found Wicca. Most of what I believe aligns well with the faith. So I began my practice with it and found that I love every part of it. The reason for my brief stories on my experiences is just to ease the minds of some people who believe me to be inexperienced. I do appreciate the concern though. It's lovely to know that people have my back and are urging me to be careful because I wholeheartedly agree that safety is 100% necessary when communicating with any spirit. To add on to that, I noticed that many people were denouncing Madam, calling her a demon. I would like to ease the minds of people who believe Madam to be a demon. Madam has never physically harmed anyone in this household. Let me explain jinxes, hexes, and curses. A jinx is like a practical joke. It's really just a nuisance of a spell that's gone very quickly. They're practically a mosquito in your life. A hex is a mildly inconveniencing spell meant to dissuade the hexed person from engaging in acts that the spellcaster does not condone. In Madame's case, she only hexes people who disrespect her, and the hex is gone within a day. They take up a lot of her energy. Hexes are moderately complex, and I've never had any issues lifting them before. A curse is a harmful spell, meant to damage the person it's directed at. Curses are difficult to lift and often cause physical harm to the person they're directed at. So with that in mind, know that Madame has never done anything physically harmful, and I don't believe she ever will. Her hexes consist of mild loss of money, misplaced important objects, emotional disturbances, dizziness, irritation, and items falling. Many of you were concerned about my younger sister. I would like to let you know that Madame has never harmed her in any way. Madame and my sister get along quite well, and my sister is no longer wary of her. My parents had hexes placed on them after they disrespected Madame, but after they apologized, they were lifted. No one has been hexed in over a month now. Let me put this into perspective for you. You're a confused person who's just been brought into a new home with people who are continuously disrespecting you. You're angry, yes? No one enjoys being disrespected. So, since this was Madame's situation, she lashed out and caused some disturbances to get our attention and let us know that she does not want to be disrespected or ignored. Madame hadn't received much kindness until she came into my home, and after a couple of weeks, she was very much at ease. She doesn't expect to be given gifts, but if she receives them, she reciprocates kindness in the form of good luck. So with that in mind, you can also make note that I don't believe Madame to be a demon. Demons often, but not always, please do your research on demonology, have malicious intent toward the residents of a home. 
demons also are less likely to attach themselves to an object and would rather attach themselves to a person. There's a difference between a demon and an angry spirit. An angry spirit needs an issue to be resolved, while a demon preys on people simply for the reason of being negative to feed off of the harm that it causes. I've also received the comment that I don't need to know the reason Madame would like to be buried, and to an extent, I agree. Madame suffered a painful, tragic death at a young age, and because of this, her reasons for burial could be very personal. I'm glad she trusted me enough to come to me about her request. I won't push her for a response on why she'd like to be buried. I'd rather just follow through with the request. So, with all of this said, I am going to bury Madame. I will not be burying her at my home, so in case something goes wrong, she doesn't attach herself to my home. Tonight is a full moon, so I'll be working with Madame in my dreams tonight to find out if there is anywhere specific she would like to be buried. I'll be salting the ground where I bury her, and I'm going to make potions to seal off the area. I have enough flowers, herbs, and crystals for protections, along with some oils, incense, candles, and pentagrams. And please don't tell me that pentagrams are demonic, because they're not. I'll be working with a sister witch during the burial as well, as an extra safety measure. I cannot verbally express how happy I am that so many people were willing to help Madame, and believe me, she's even more pleased than I am. The whole house feels very light today, and the animals have been extra happy. I'm in awe of the kindness that we've both received, and I'm glad you all decided to help. This is the story of Madeline, the doll that has my face. For context, my mom is the original owner of Madeline, but Madeline has been mine since I was a child. Madeline was bought by my mother about 35 years ago, long before I was born. There's a possibility that she's a lot older than that, as she was secondhand when my mom bought her. These are my experiences with this doll. I'm well aware that creepy doll is a trope, but stay with me. Madeline, I named her, is a porcelain doll with a soft body filled of horse hair, with her hands and feet and face made of plain white porcelain. Her hair, according to a doll expert I had her repaired by a few years ago, is a combination of horse and human. She's about 30 centimeters long, with brown hair, blue eyes, wears a blue cotton dress with embellishments, black leather lace-up boots, and a somewhat Victorian underdress. I believe she was pretty common, a generic doll type. I base this off the fact that I took her to doll shows as a child to find out a little bit more about her, since she doesn't have any marks. And another lady had her almost exact identical replica. Same dress, same colors, hair, and everything. So she must have been pretty common. The only difference? The face. The lady and I compared the dolls, vividly pointing out how my doll's face was almost identical to mine. I'm not saying it's impossible to have dolls who look somewhat similar to you. I mean, that's just good marketing, really. But at the time, I had a jaw problem that required surgery, and the doll's jaw perfectly matched mine. Heavy overbite. This lady's doll didn't at all. Given the dolls had everything else exactly the same except the face, it just sort of makes me wonder if at some point her face had been replaced or repainted before my mom purchased her. I don't believe Madeline to be a harmful entity, but a few strange things have happened that make me wonder. As a child, I kept her on my bed on the top bunk. I had one of those loft beds with a desk under it while I was at school. If someone was to change the sheets, they'd put her back because mom was always worried that the dog would eat her. She was always on my bed, and I was the only kid in the house, so I'm the only one who played with her at the time. At school one day, I would have been about 10 years old, I broke my right wrist. Most children will break something in childhood, and I had fallen out of a tree. 
I remember getting home from the hospital at about 8 p.m., and I was a bit dopey from the assistance they'd given me. Because I couldn't climb the bunk in a cast, Mom made me up the mattress on the ground. I had grabbed Madeline so that Mom could move the bed, when suddenly, Madeline's right hand dropped onto the carpet. I would brush this off, but more has happened. Once I needed stitches in my head. I came home and there was a chunk of Madeline's hair gone. I had jaw correction surgery. Now neither of us have an overbite. I've had knee surgery and have a scar on my right foot. And she has just had a crack repaired on her right foot. Mom, who hadn't seen her in a few years as I've had things in storage, recently made a comment and it's what made me decide to tell my story. She said, I remember her having a much younger looking face when you were little. Could this doll be aging with me, experiencing things like I am? I really don't know what it means, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. My memory of my early childhood is quite good. I wouldn't say that I'm sensitive to the paranormal at all. I'm just a regular old person. When I was about four years old, I owned a baby doll. This doll didn't look creepy or anything. The doll's entire body was made of hard plastic. The shoulder and hip joints, maybe the neck too, could bend, but none of the other joints could such as the hands and feet, which were molded plastic shapes. The doll wore a long-sleeved white onesie that had tiny purple triangles on it. Bald head, I think. I have no idea where I got this doll, or what brand it is, or anything. Just that I lived in BC, Canada at the time. This was around 2001. My parents can't remember the doll, which I think is kind of odd. So basically, the doll's hands would change. I can specifically remember my uncle placing the doll on the couch, with its arms out, and both hands completely open. Sometime after that, the hands would be in fists, or one hand would be opened and the other one would be closed. At the time, of course, I had no clue that this was weird whatsoever. I just tried to pry the plastic hands open when they were closed, swearing that they were open the last time I had checked, but to no avail. It's physically impossible for the hands to have changed, but they did. It wasn't a fancy or expensive doll either. I don't know if this was paranormal at all, but I'm pretty damn certain of what I saw. I have no idea where that doll is now. I gave most of my toys away when I was six, when we had to move to another country. But sometimes I look back on that and wonder, what was up with that doll? When I was younger, about five years old, I had a baby doll. It was one of those weird mixes of cloth and plastic with a battery-powered voice box. One day, this thing just started laughing constantly. It would not shut up. We took the batteries out, but it continued. We threw it outside and forgot about it for about a year when we finally found it. We found it again and the damn thing could still laugh. At that point, it had been without a battery pack and laying outside for over a year. There's no reason that it should have laughed. One day, my mom put it in the trunk of her car to try to seal it off, and a few years later, she got into a bad accident that crushed the front and back end of her car. I know this isn't a typical story, but I still wind up thinking about it from time to time, just because of how creepy it was. Also, my mom's okay. The crash happened a few years ago. Still, 
I always think back on that doll and wonder how the hell it was laughing without any power source. My daughter has a toy doll. You squeeze its stomach and it giggles or says something like mama or papa. Well, it used to anyway. She's been bringing it into the pool, the bath, her water table, etc. The electronic box inside stopped working about two weeks ago. Until the other night. The doll was laying on the bedroom floor, most definitely not being squeezed and it made one of its voice box noises. It did several times that night. The first time it did, I shot right up and asked my husband where the doll was, if it was under the blankets and maybe I'd rolled on it, but it wasn't. It was on the floor, not being touched. After giving myself a talk off the ledge, I fell asleep. It did the same thing a couple of more times. We laughed about it in the morning and my husband said that maybe it just dried out and started working again. So I grabbed it and squeezed it to see if that was the case. Nope. No matter how I squeezed, the voice box inside wouldn't make a peep. I don't really know what's going on with that doll, but I have no explanation for how the voice box started working without being touched when it's dead. When I was around 13 or 14 years old, my great-grandmother used to collect dolls. One of the dolls I took a particular liking to because of how creepy it was. She picked up on it and actually gave it to me not too long before she passed away. Fast forward to the story at hand. My two stepbrothers and I were sitting in the living room chatting late at night, around 1 a.m. or so. For context, this is a cookie cutter house so when you walk in, you basically have to choose between going upstairs or downstairs. The living room is directly upstairs from the front door. There's a fireplace on the left-hand wall, but not much else to note since it was an open concept. Adjacent to the wall, there was the railing overlooking the doorway area, and in front of the railing is a couch. There's also a television sitting on the ground on the wall opposite the couch. During our conversation, we got on the topic of childhood paranormal experiences. Joking around, I went and grabbed the doll from my bedroom and leaned it up on the shelf above the fireplace. I made sure that when I put the doll up there, it was leaning securely so as not to slip off. Some things that are important to note. The television was on, but just in the no signal screen. And because we were preparing to move, there were boxes and trash bags piled up in front of the fireplace, at least three to five feet out. We were all sitting on the couch at this time. In the middle of a story that my younger stepbrother was telling about an experience he'd had in the basement of a childhood home, the doll was flung forward from the shelf, landing a good few feet away from the boxes, meaning that it had to fly a good six to eight feet from the fireplace. At the exact time that the doll made contact with the ground, the television shut itself off and then turned back on. We have never had any electrical issues in that house or with that TV. I know people are going to say that it's possible the doll just fell, but the doll didn't fall. It flew forward off the shelf, even though it had been leaning backwards. And things that fall don't typically fall seven feet to eight feet out. They fall down. So, I don't know. But I think we might have a haunted doll on our hands. About three weeks ago now, I got this doll from this antique store that I was at with my boyfriend. 
The doll was sitting in a rocking chair and it caught my eye. I brought the doll to my best friend's house and his girlfriend refused to look at the doll. She hated being in the same room as it. My best friend and I started playing with the spirit box and nothing that creepy spawned out of it. The past week or so has been slightly weird though. The doll's legs seem to cross on their own. I uncross them and they always end up crossed again. Now, paintings keep falling down near the doll. My paintings are canvas paintings and not on paper, so I hang them up over pushpins. The pushpins themselves completely fall out of the wall. Today, an extremely small painting was just off one pushpin and it was just crooked. My paintings have been hung up on my wall for a year now and not once have they ever behaved like this. It could all be a coincidence, sure, but I don't know. It's kind of creeping me out. I'm starting to wonder if that doll really is haunted. I grew up in England in what my family referred to as an upside down house. Basically, the row of houses were built on a hill. So you entered into the upstairs, your hall, living room, dining room, kitchen and toilet, and then went downstairs for the bedrooms, which opened out onto the garden. The house itself was never comfortable. For context, I would have birthday parties where kids would line up to use the upstairs bathroom instead of daring to use the downstairs one. My mom found a cross necklace in her wardrobe one time. Another time, her work shirt disappeared and she tore about the whole house, only for it to show up at the very front of her wardrobe, all pressed and clean. Another time, I was in the downstairs bathroom and I was just singing nonsense lyrics that I was making up in my head. A male voice sang the next line that I had in my head. I ran to the stairs, sat down halfway up, and all I could hear was his laughter. So yeah, fun house. The doll story, though, still remains the single most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me, paranormal-wise. I honestly can't recall my age, but it was before 10. I had one of those bunk beds with storage underneath. The night before, I had set up a stuffed toy sleepover in my bed. Not relevant, but there you go. I woke up that morning and I didn't immediately open my eyes. I could sense somebody watching me. I finally opened my eyes and I noticed that something felt really off about the line of dolls and toys on the shelf over my wardrobe. It's a long, thin room and this is exactly opposite my bed. One doll's eyes felt different still doll eyes but not not blinking or moving just different i could feel its eyes on me as if it were a human looking at me that's the only way i can describe it i closed my eyes and reopened them nothing changed i counted to 10 mentally i threw off my covers and practically jumped down the ladder and i just bailed out of there no matter what i did i just felt that that one doll was watching me I turn back to the door as I'm going, and I swear by all things holy, this thing is leaning out over the edge of the shelf to watch me go. I hid in my mom's bed with her, terrified that it would somehow follow me. I cautiously went back in later and stared at it, but it was just a doll again. I took it down and hid it in the back of the wardrobe for who knows how long. I've never been comfortable around dolls since. Whatever was in that house, at least whatever the masculine presence was, really liked to scare me. I visited the street about eight years ago after having moved out over a decade ago, and that house still gives me the creeps. My mother's friend still lives down the street. She signed up for permanent night shift at her job because she said dark shadows would peer into her windows at night and she'd rather just be gone. She also says that she senses people coming up behind her when she's home alone. So yeah, fun house and 
Fun Street. I've had a haunted doll ever since I was a kid, and I just found out. I'm writing this as she's sitting next to me, so that I can make sure she's okay with the post. But when I was little, like six or seven, my great grandma died. I hadn't known, but she had willed me a vintage doll that she owned. It was a pretty doll with brown hair and bright blue eyes that she had crocheted a beautiful dress for. But as a little girl, she scared me and she was put in a keepsake dresser with other things that reminded me of her. Go forward to just after my birthday this year. It's been quite a while since the doll came into my possession and I have come into contact with a family of ghosts. I have also converted to Wicca and specialize in divination. I felt a pull toward the keepsake chest, but my altar was on top, so I didn't think much of it. When I finally decided to check yesterday, I found the doll that I had forgotten about. I felt that strong pull again. Her energy wasn't like my great grandma's, but it wasn't negative. It felt like she wanted to talk to me and get my attention. To make a long story a little shorter, I used EVP to communicate, but she didn't like that. So then I used a Ouija board, which got me a little further. Finally, automatic writing got me the furthest. I learned the most from the writing session, which I kept a record of on my computer. I got her name and age, as well as the year of death. Her name is Catherine, but she goes by Kathy. I felt sleepy and I took a nap with her at the foot of my bed. When I woke up, she was in my arms. I also had a strange dream about her while I napped. So I sat around for a bit and every time I left the room, she would move a little bit from where she was before. Mostly it was just her arms or eyes, which do blink. I brought it up to a medium friend of mine, the one who had helped me with the ghost family. She explained some things to me and when I asked Kathy to give me a sign, the fire alarm went off and my desk lamp's metal cover looked burned. My stepmom blamed it on the candle on my nightstand, but it wasn't lit at the time. While my sister and I talked in the hall, I peeked my head back in a few times and she kept on moving. We decided to bring her into my sister's room. I told her how Kathy wanted her hair unmatted and wanted me to sew her an orange and lemon dress. My sister unmatted her hair and I'm getting the thread in the fabric later today. We got distracted once more and I made cookies, but every time that we would check on Kathy, she would move again. When I went to bed last night, I just kept her in my arms because I knew she would end up there anyway, no matter where I put her. No weird dreams that I remember last night, for now anyway. A few years ago, I was part of a local paranormal investigation team. On one investigation, the client had several dolls among her possessions, many of which were in a display case in the living room. Upon arrival, we were doing a walkthrough to determine the hot spots for us to check out, decide camera placement, and get some basic background information. While in the living room, the client invited us to check out a few specific dolls from the case that held particular interest to her. Three dolls were taken out of the case and looked at by a few of our team members. The one that caught my attention the most was wearing a dress and a cape, had beautiful curly hair, and was about six inches tall. When I was done checking the doll out, I handed it back to the client to be returned to the case. After the normal settling that takes place after the doll was back in its spot, the case was closed. I started to turn away from it. Two other team members and the client witnessed the next thing that happened. The doll reached out toward me, as though it wanted me to pick it back up, 
I almost ran out of the house, but I reminded myself that I was there to help determine what was going on in the house. Some things were debunked as normal, other things were determined to be paranormal or unexplained, but that doll freaked me out. I have had dolls my entire life. Baby dolls, porcelain dolls, Barbie dolls. I like them just fine. My dad fears them, and as kids, my sister and I would joke about it with him, since my great-grandmother's house is filled with all kinds of dolls and porcelain statues. But in recent years, especially right now, something feels off. My sister recently moved in with us due to her being unhappy living with my biological mother. She is in high school and naturally grew out of wanting her American Girl doll. I would say that I am now the proud owner of two, except here's the thing. The home that my sister was in was charged with so much negative intense energy. I know she didn't mean to bring any negative spirits into our home and I don't blame her for this. I love my sister very much, and it was kind of her to give me her Josephina doll, along with the little things and clothing that came with her. It is a beautiful, well taken care of doll, but I can feel something is very wrong with this doll. Even as I am sitting here, telling this story, I feel like something is watching me, something very bad and unwelcome in my parents' home. I am fearing the worst, but I'm not crying for help nor do I need it, because I feel like I should try to assess the situation myself before I decide to involve others with this dark energy that seems to radiate off the doll. Right now, it is very strong. I am afraid to go near the shelf she is sitting on at the moment. When I first got her, I changed her outfit and felt this very sad energy. The doll even looks sad, like it witnessed something truly awful and heartbreaking. Now it feels evil and insidious. I never have gotten this feeling from any other doll I've ever received as a gift in my entire life. I am an adult and really shouldn't be acting like a scared child, but this is terrifying. I feel uneasy and an overwhelming sense of dread, but I do not feel like I need to relocate at the moment since I feel like I'm strong enough to fight whatever this thing may be. I need to protect my family and I will do it but I have no option but to do this for myself. I hate running from things like this, so I won't do it this time. At the same time, I don't know or possess the ability to cleanse the doll. I don't trust online sources for these types of situations. Many things will mislead you. I don't like the idea of putting the doll away because I don't want my sister to feel sad. But at the same time, I don't want to tell her the reason so that she doesn't think I'm crazy. My stepmom is spiritual, but even she would think that I was just overreacting and acting like a scared child. My dad would probably agree with me, but that's just because he's afraid of dolls in general. He's not really into the spiritual side of it, nor does he give it much thought like I do. It's probably for the best, too. I don't know. Maybe my stepmom would believe me, but say that I'm overreacting for fear of manifesting in the fear even more. She's wise like that, but she's also turning a blind eye and that solves nothing. I think I know who gave it this bad energy too. I won't refer to them because they're just that bad and they give off the worst energy. I respect people in general, but this person in my life as well as my sisters is a truly evil being and I can't forgive them. The doll has a story and not a happy one either. And that's just the beginning of things. I keep seeing shadows of a man out of the corner of my eye, regardless of the time of day or night. I went downstairs to get some water when I saw it very clearly this time. The resemblance it took was from this exact toxic person that I mentioned. The same shadow, the same figure, shape, and height. I almost dropped my cup. I'm contemplating on telling a close friend of mine but I also refuse to burden them with something as silly sounding as this. 
I hope these occurrences stop and I can put it out of my mind. I'm wearing a rose quartz bracelet that has other stones that I unfortunately don't remember the names of, but it does protect me to an extent. I know it might sound silly, but the bracelet was made by very good people, and their energy shines through this bracelet. I hope it helps me fend off whatever this is, and that I can tell it to leave me alone before I have to act upon it and drive it away forcefully myself. I'm not afraid to do anything that I need to do to protect my parents and sister. I know some people will say, it's just a doll, it's harmless, but I thought that too, but I think I was very mistaken. I hope that nothing like this ever happens to any of you. It's a very painful and draining thing to go through. So when I was seven to nine, I don't remember what age I was exactly. I had this doll that was about as tall as a German Shepherd dog. This doll had a voice box where if you pressed it, it would laugh and giggle for about 30 seconds. This voice box was placed in a pocket in the back of the doll's dress. Eventually, I kind of got annoyed with the voice box due to it going off a lot. Before this incident, I had thought that some stuff behind it was pressing on it, or that the pocket was sewn on too tightly, so it was pressing the box when there was pressure on the pocket. As I said, I just got really annoyed with this box, so I had emptied out a drawer and placed the box in the drawer. I had closed the drawer carefully so as not to move the box in the slightest. After this, I went to sleep. At maybe midnight, I had woken to the sound of the box coming from the doll. The doll I had made sure to place on the opposite side of the room from the drawer that the box was in. Forgetting for a minute that I had taken the box out of the doll, I tried to go back to sleep. About five minutes later, as I was dozing, I remembered where I had put the box, and I got up to open the drawer. It was still there, exactly where I had left it. A few weeks later, I got rid of the doll, However, for a few years after that, I could still hear the laughter of the doll's voice box, even when both the box and the doll were out of the house. To this day, I can't really explain it. I have a hobby of collecting older dolls that kind of sit in my room. Some have been gifted, and others I just got for me. One that I got recently just doesn't seem right. Others I can feel the energy from, hence why I got them. But this one, there was just nothing. I got her anyway and named her like I do with all the others. Her name is Abigail. Ever since I brought her home, Things have been really weird, especially when I sleep. I've been having dreams of drowning and a girl screaming. At first I thought it was just stress because of exams, but now it's getting worse and I'm done with school. Now, maybe it's not Abigail, maybe it's another one of the dolls, but this had never happened until she came into my home. The dreams of the girl, she couldn't be older than maybe 15. Is there anything I can do? Is there anything I should do? I don't really know what to do next. I've been interested in the paranormal for as long as I can remember and have been investigating the paranormal for about 12 years now. I purchased three haunted dolls a year ago, and up until now, all has been quiet, except for one incident that happened a few months ago. I was laying in bed, desperate to use the bathroom, but not wanting to brave the cold. Being the only person in the house, I hear someone say, psst, behind me. It takes me a minute to brave turning over, 
But when I did, there was nothing and nobody there. I have no explanation for this sound. None of my electronics make this noise, nor does anything else in my house. My cats do not have access to my bedroom or the hallway leading to it while I sleep. We can't hear their noises from the bedroom. Then nothing more happened until last week. My partner has a cylindrical massage roller. It sits underneath the exercise bike. So we're sitting watching TV and the roller rolls across the room out of nowhere. Nothing interacted with it. I accept that there is a possibility that it could have fallen, but with how it usually sits, it seems very unlikely. It's also never happened before, and it hasn't happened since. My cats have one of those little balls that light up when something touches it, and the last two days it's been randomly lighting up on its own. I hear this can happen when the batteries are low, but this was a fresh ball about a week ago. And today, sitting quietly, scrolling social media, the guitar that sits on its stand across the lounge from the sofa randomly rings out. All the cats were sleeping at the time, and nothing was around it to fall and hit the strings. Again, I just don't have an explanation for it. I plan to do some EVP work with the dolls and see whether anything comes of it, but my house also sits on the side of an old hospital and has a church and cemetery just across the street too, so who knows what might be going on. This is super exciting for me, but I'm remembering to keep my skeptical brain on and trying to debunk everything. Update. There was a little more activity. I was just getting myself ready for bed two days ago, and I heard scratching coming from under the bed. I did the obvious cat check. No cat. I checked for signs of other wildlife outside or something, but nothing. I went for a nap yesterday and once again was woken to whispering in my ear. This time, it really did sound like my partner speaking words that I couldn't understand. He wasn't in the room. He wasn't even talking elsewhere in the house. Very strange, but still super exciting. Update number two. Things have been quiet for a few days now. It feels kind of eerie with nothing happening. Almost like that feeling you get of the calm before the storm. Update number three. The scratching continues. It's happening in the daytime now too. I've searched high and low for the source and have come up empty. Balls continue to flash on their own, but nothing new yet. I hope to get some quiet time in the next few weeks to try some EVP. Update number four. I was woken up to scratching again yesterday, last night, followed by a woman quietly singing. This is completely new activity. Every other time that I've heard something that sounded like a voice, it was always male. Update number five. Laying in bed last night, trying to sleep but struggling, I heard a male voice grunt behind me, as if somebody was turning over in their sleep in the bed next to me. It took me a moment to realize that my partner was not in bed yet, so this noise couldn't be coming from him. I've never been scared of any of the paranormal activity that I've ever experienced before, not even when I've been physically touched. But for some reason, this felt different, wrong somehow. I jumped out of the bed and literally ran into the lounge, shaking. My partner searched the bedroom in case someone had broken in, but obviously there was no one to be found. This one has left me very shaken and I can't yet put a finger on why. This happened a long time ago. My family and I love going to garage sales and thrift stores. My parents are very friendly and polite and people usually like them pretty quickly. So they've been offered several times to take stuff for free, and they've even gotten these types of deals. You can have everything for free, but you have to take all the stuff. So we've ended up with a truck filled with random garage sale items more than once. One time, my mom and I were in her bedroom, checking the loot of one of these types of deals. We were having a good time while sorting all of the stuff. 
we got to this big trash bag that was filled with dolls. There were lots of them. So I decided to just open the entire bag and put them all out on the bed. We started checking the dolls one by one, choosing which ones to keep for my sister and which ones we should give away and which ones we should throw away. Most of these deals include taking some trash, but we didn't care, it was fun. We have half the bag sorted out. When we get to this tumbling doll that supposedly can do flips, my mom likes it. Looks like new and seems like a fun toy for my sister, so she wants to keep it. She asks me to test it to see the doll tumbling, but the batteries seem to be dead. Tried again with brand new batteries, but still no luck. After a few minutes, I concluded that the doll must be broken and that it didn't work. So I take out the batteries and place the old dead ones back in. I put the doll back on the bed and we keep sorting the items. 15 minutes pass and my mom and I were just taking a break chatting when suddenly we hear this loud noise that sounded like gears and an overcharged motor. We looked at the bed and the sound comes from the doll, the tumbling one. And right in front of both of us, this doll turns its head, looks at me and says, Mama. The movement was so abrupt that I even felt the bed shake a little. My mom and I looked at each other and I saw her face turn ash white. I just punched the doll as hard as I could as a reflex and it landed on the other side of the bedroom. We immediately went to the kitchen to calm down and explain what just happened to my dad. After a few minutes, I go back to the room with my dad to investigate, trying to figure out what had just happened. My mom enters in full rage mode and goes for the doll and puts it in a plastic bag and asks my dad to take it out to the trash out of the house, now. My parents are religious, so after that they prayed and blessed the entire house for almost an hour. I've never seen my mom that scared. It truly felt like a scene from a horror movie. I expected the doll to get up and attack me in that moment. I don't really believe in the paranormal, even though I have had a couple of experiences that scared me that I can't explain. Growing up, I always hated dolls and was scared of them, even to the point of having really messed up nightmares about them. Good thing this happened when I was older, around 16, or I'd probably still be traumatized. What still bugs me is that even if I do find some rational explanation for why the doll worked again with dead batteries, with the power switch off and not being touched by anything, the doll wasn't a baby doll. It was a gymnastics doll that was supposed to do flips. As it wasn't new and there was no box, I'll probably never know if saying mama was one of its features. And honestly, I'm okay never knowing. A while back, Rando Nautica directed me and some friends of mine to some scary woods. I obviously had a lot of interesting findings over the last few days, but today was definitely significant. Along the same scary woods path that Rando Nautica had led us to, some friends and I were showing it off to another friend. We happened to find a random clearing in the forest with some path just along the road. I was driving, so I stayed lookout at the car while two of my friends went in with flashlights. It was around 9 p.m. When they went in, everything seemed normal until they looked up and saw tons of different dolls hanging above in the trees. I heard my first friend scream and run out of there. My second friend started recording and got it on camera before he also ran out. They told me that there were even more dolls that they didn't notice going in and the ones near the exit of the clearing were even creepier, having large eyes and for some disconnected eyes. None of us have any idea what this could be. Something cursed, some kind of ritual. We don't really know, but it was definitely freaky.
My church had a fish fry in the seventh grade. I had decided not to go, but to host friends after. I was playing video games when they walked into my house. I noticed that one of them had a strange all black doll in their hands. Obviously, I inquired, and they told me that they had found a voodoo doll. Later, I would learn that the creepy kid at school had thrown it at them. None of us bought it, so naturally, we started putting our hair in it. After messing around with it to no avail, we left it on the floor and turned on a movie. Later on, another friend joined us, and not seeing the doll, he kicked it clear across the room. We paid it no mind at first, but seconds later my friend starts to cry as blood comes pouring out of his nose. Freaked out, we run out of the basement and try to move on with the night. For the next couple of nights, my friends and I experienced weird events. The main two people who messed with it got the worst. The number one culprit had footsteps walking all around his room, and his door would open during the night. Along with the footsteps and doors, he would hear masculine voices outside of his door. His parents were lesbians, so it wasn't either of them, as they both had fairly feminine and higher-pitched voices. The second culprit was awoken three nights in a row with bloody noses. Personally, I just had very vivid dreams of family members being killed and horrifying images. Not much has happened since, and I don't really talk to those guys anymore as we kind of all went on our separate paths. I still am not entirely sure what we experienced or how it all happened, but I'll never mess with one of those things again. I just got this beautiful antique baby doll from Etsy. Something about her really caught my attention, and I just had to have her. I do collect antique dolls and trinkets, but I knew since day one that this one was different. I have used two different kinds of EMF meters on her throughout the day, and I have received various intelligent responses, both with the EMF and with the spirit box and combined. She doesn't have any batteries of any sort in her that could give off a faulty reading. I have had my phone in a different room with the lights off while conducting multiple tests with the EMF, and I ensured that she wasn't anywhere near walls or light switches. I'm looking for a logical explanation here. If I can't find one, I may just assume that this doll truly does have a paranormal attachment. I've always loved the paranormal, even as a little girl. I grew up with horror movies and find the paranormal fascinating. I've had a few encounters in the past that I'll probably tell about later, and my house is also haunted. But on to the first paranormal experience I ever had. I don't have any photos or anything, because this happened when I was in the third grade in 2003 and I didn't have anything to record with or even to take pictures with at the time. Anyway, I was watching the 1994 version of Little Women with my mom and my grandmother was in the room. I saw movement out of the corner of my eye on my bookshelf where all my dolls were. The air was off, but I could see one of the doll's dresses billowing around her and one of my other dolls was reaching out to her. I brushed it off as my mind playing tricks on me. I should mention that my mom had rearranged them that day and had them all facing in the same direction. Skip to the next day. I had walked out of my room because my grandmother had called me to ask me something. And I walked back in and all of my dolls were turned in different directions and facing different ways. I ran out of there screaming. My mom didn't believe me until I showed her. She fixed them again, but my room had always been off and I had obtained more dolls from a family friend a few years later 
And this is when things really got weird. I have two musical dolls and they would go off randomly sometimes. I started to feel like I was being watched and that I wasn't alone, but I brushed it off as paranoia because I never experienced anything major other than some of my dolls appearing to move every once in a while. Skip again to college after years of dealing with minimal doll movement, something changed. I was in my room one night and I felt something breathe down my neck. It scared me so much that I didn't sleep in my room that night anymore. My parents divorced when I was 15 and my dad was dating this girl who loved the paranormal and was a medium. I asked her if whenever she came over, she would check out and cleanse my room. The moment she stepped into my room, she looked at me and asked if there was a doll in my closet. My heart sank because the family friend had given me a porcelain baby doll that was practically life-sized, but it had no eyes. That was the one in my closet, and she confirmed that that was the one she was getting negative vibes from. She prayed over my room, saged it, and I still have the rose quartz in my room that she gave me. I got rid of the majority of my dolls, and I don't feel anything in my room anymore. I still constantly check my bookshelf though, just to make sure everything's all right. And it's been almost two years since I got rid of my haunted dolls. But still, I don't think I'll ever forget. The summer before last, my boyfriend and I took a road trip to Omaha, Nebraska, with the main purpose being to visit the Museum of Shadows. We're both somewhere between believer and skeptic and thought that it would be a great experience for us. Leaning in, he even paid the $20 to rent a spirit box to use as we walked around the museum. If you haven't visited the Museum of Shadows, I'd recommend it, even if only because I found it very cathartic. It's mostly dolls with tragic stories attached to them, but walking around reading all the stories of suffering and sadness that families associated with many of these items was very heart opening for lack of a better word. Some items I felt were just creepy and that's where people's associations of hauntings came from when they owned them. I believe sometimes people create their own hauntings by just simply being afraid of an object same with the dolls owned by children who had passed. The families are just so saddened and grief-stricken that they begin to assign their child's spirit to those items. It's so sad, but it really made me feel a great connection to people that I didn't even know, which I think is great for the spirit, however sad. So our spirit box wasn't giving us anything, literally not a single intelligible word. We weren't angry or disappointed, it was sort of a neat if we hear something, but understandable if we don't sort of thing, because we sort of assumed a majority of the items in there could not be haunted. They've got this doll, Demas, and when I say my heart rate increased just by typing her name, I'm not lying. She lives in a chicken wire cage toward the back of the first floor of the museum, and she is scary looking, not a normal looking doll. I got uneasy when I just saw her, and this is in a building full of frightening dolls. Maybe that's intentional though. Maybe they put her in a cage to raise your apprehension. There is a sign above her that says if you choose to speak to her, always say goodbye, which of course you should do with any spirit, I guess. But Demas is apparently particularly malicious. I'm a pretty bold soul, so as we're standing there together with the spirit box, I decided I wanted to talk with her. Hello, I said, and the spirit box just kept clicking. I didn't know what to talk to her about, but I'm always worried about lost spirits, so I decided to ask, are you okay? Without hesitation, the spirit box said, Amanda, extremely clearly. My boyfriend and I both heard it. I said, did it just? And he was like, yes, it absolutely just said your name. 
I said above that I was brave, but I was also immediately filled with a sense of dread. Something about it saying my name, and that we'd gotten absolutely nothing else out of that box the entire time we were there, was terrifying. And I do not scare easily. I didn't continue the conversation. I just said, goodbye, and ushered my boyfriend away from her, because I was so uncomfortable with her following that. Just now I went through their Facebook feed to see if I still felt the same about her, and even saw an event where they let people hold her. I've never felt so appalled seeing such innocent looking photographs. That doll is the only item I have ever encountered that I am 100% sure is haunted and maybe even malicious. As a really small child, I used to be terrified of a doll that my grandmother had that had been handmade for my mother when she was younger. I had repetitive nightmares where this thing would come to visit me for most of my childhood, and even occasionally as a teenager and adult. The last time that I was around it, physically, was shortly after my grandmother died, and I still felt uneasy looking directly at it even at 25 years old. My mom sold it during an estate sale to a woman in the town where my grandmother died, and it's lost as far as I know. I had always written off this phobia as some weird, irrational childhood fear, because Raggedy Ann dolls are creepy as hell looking, especially when they're homemade, and I just assumed that it was normal. But the hold this doll had on me it made me feel as if it was staring into the depths of my soul constantly. I just couldn't shake. Then something crazy happened. And after doing some research, I discovered that the real life version of the Annabelle doll matched the Raggedy Ann version my grandmother had almost perfectly. I know most of this is just a coincidence, but I have always felt that something was off about this doll. It harbored that energy. Oddly enough, after all of this, I have inquired about the doll to my mother, because I feel like I have this weird connection to it. She told me that she never kept it in the house around me when I was younger, because I always cried and became hysterical at night when it was around, so she gave it to my grandmother. I'm just imagining me finding this thing and then driving it home in the middle of the night and crazy things start happening. For the record, I do not believe in ghosts or spirits, but I will go to my grave saying that I picked up on something evil from this doll as a kid. I really wish I had a picture to share, but I honestly avoided this thing as much as possible and always felt that it was looking at me from around the corner at night. I don't know if anybody else has experienced something like this as a kid, where you just knew something wasn't right. It probably sounds dumb, but... I honestly believe that something was going on, and my younger self picked up on it. This happened a few years ago, and it's something that I consider to be a paranormal experience. For context, I collect vintage clown dolls, and I'm a clown for hire myself. Clowns have been a big part of my life. I find clowns very comforting, so collecting older ones was always something that I've been excited about. I don't have very many clown dolls. Specifically, I collect sand clowns, usually. I have around eight or ten clown dolls, I think. So a few years back, I got a hold of a new sand clown among two others. I instantly had a very strong connection to the clown, and I would take him with me everywhere. In the car, around the house, that sort of casual thing. I think I even took him to school once in my backpack. I was in high school at the time. A little while after this, I started having dreams. I still remember them vividly in such high detail. 
I had the same exact dream every time, and I knew it was a dream. I was fully conscious during them. It didn't feel like a dream. It almost felt like it was real life somehow. I had these dreams back to back several times. The dream would be that I was in a house with wooden floors, wooden walls, and a wooden roof. At the end of the room that I was facing, there was one wooden chair with my clown doll sitting in it staring at me. There were two doors to the side of it, open, with a little toy train track that ran through both of them. There were two doors on either side. The first dream, I just looked through all the doors, the two bedrooms, the standard sort of guest room, I suppose, and on the left, the first door was a little girl's room with a crib and some toys like bears. It was very sweet. The last room was a sort of sitting room, couches and a coffee table. When I came back, the clown was still there in the chair. I walked up to it and started talking to it, but nothing really happened. I did feel sort of unnerved, like there was a presence, and I never went through the two gateways because it was pitch black and it scared me. In most dreams, I feel some sort of progress towards something. These dreams never progressed or changed. It was the same room, the same clown, nothing going on, just a sense of unease, like I was being watched. So I kept getting these dreams every night, over and over, back to back. After a while, I start to get scared and I yell at the clown doll. I just sort of ask what I'm doing there and if it was haunted or something. I got really upset at this point. The clown's eyes looked side to side and it really freaked me out. In the last dream I had, I got mad and I told it to leave me alone and to never come back to bother me. I was really scared and started talking about some religious things because I was getting worried that it could have been a demon or a ghost at this point haunting me. I started getting really into it and a little train came out of the doorway and just ran around the track once, whistling a few times. The clown doll's eyes looked directly at me and he said something for the first time and I woke up. I can't remember what it was, I could never make it out. After this, I never had that dream again. I guess whatever I did made it leave, or not? I'm not really sure, honestly. I'm sure a lot of people would say, hey, this isn't supernatural. What are you, stupid? It's just a dream. But it's something that I felt, deep in my core, that this was supernatural, because I've never experienced anything like it. The clown doll is still one of my favorites. After the dreams, I actually feel more attached to it. These dolls mean a lot to me and I have them on my desk and I still take them with me places sometimes. When I hold them now, it almost feels like it fills me with a sense of calm. Sometimes I wonder if it does have some sort of spirit attached to it, but maybe it's just very good and helpful. I got this clown and went through this when I was going through recovery from extensive trauma, and they have helped me a lot in my recovery despite the weird and scary dreams. I almost feel like I know him, like we're friends. I know it sounds kind of weird, and I'm sure this isn't the most exciting story, but that's what happened to me. My daughter has several old porcelain dolls. When she was nine, she got a sudden interest in them. I had never bought them for her because they're often very delicate and I didn't want her to break them. I took her to the Goodwill store and she begged for one. I let her buy it since she takes good care of her things. I quickly noticed that something was different in my house. I felt like I was being watched. Shortly after that, she asked for another doll at the Goodwill. Over the years, she has collected three. 
I noticed that she was very careful about which one she picked. She treats the dolls like gold and keeps them sitting up on the corner of her bed. She tells me the dolls like me since I'm so careful with them when I move them to make her bed. I see shadows around my house and I hear soft voices. Nothing that makes me feel in danger and I'm getting used to it, but it's just freaky and it never happened until we brought that first doll home. My dad died when I was 11. Every summer, we went to a little town which had a porcelain doll museum. I loved going there, hanging out with my dad, and I had several dolls myself, but one I loved the most. It resembled an Indian girl with two braids. I kept it on a shelf facing my bed, pushed into the corner of it. I had it for about three to four years, and I never touched it once. I just admired it. Well, as I mentioned, my dad died in December. Fast forward half a year later, it's June, summer holidays, and I'm laying on my bed with my laptop, chatting with my friend at midnight. Both my door and my window were open, but it was quiet outside, no wind, nothing. The doll suddenly fell to the floor. I was startled by the noise, but confused since it didn't shatter. The shelf was nearly two meters high, about six feet. So I turned off the lights, covered myself in a blanket and went to sleep, hoping that I could. I couldn't figure out how it could have fallen from that height and not broken. The next morning, the doll was still on the ground, face down. And I started to think, how could it have fallen? It was protected from any wind, even though there was none. And there were 40 centimeters of empty space in front of it someone would have had to pull it out and drop it. I got up, shaking, and slowly approached it. I sat on the floor and picked it up. The doll was intact, except for one thing. The left braid was cut in half. Not torn, cut. I quickly put it away and I never touched it again. I didn't even look at it. I still don't really know what happened. Sometimes I think that it was my dad, but I only think that to comfort myself. As I grow older, it doesn't seem logical. Why would my dad, who loved me the most, try to hurt my favorite doll that I got from him? My story happened when I was nine years old. I'm 17 now, and I'm in Belgium. I shared the story with some friends, but I wanted more people to hear it. For my birthday when I was nine, I had tickets to go to Disneyland Paris with my mom. I was really happy because it was my first time there. It was really good, and I had a great time. After I did the Buzz Lightyear attraction, I asked my mom if I could have one of the toys, and she bought me one. I played with it sometimes, and I was the kind of kid that threw his toys around and found that funny. I did that with my Buzz Lightyear, but I was careful so I wouldn't break it. My toys never had a violent impact, it's not like I had an anger problem, I just liked to throw them and see what would happen. I stopped to play with it. But the thing is that one year later, he started to make these really random sounds and shoot his laser at night for no reason. I have glasses, but on my bed, I was able to see the red light and the sound was loud. The thing is that nothing was touching it and he doesn't have any kind of detection thing on him. Nothing was touching him, so it wasn't supposed to make a sound or talk or shoot or anything. Even if I was young, I didn't believe in ghosts, but this still scared me. It was making sounds only at night when I was in bed asleep or trying to. I was really scared because it just never stopped. I remember asking my dad to please get it out of my room, 
so he put it in the basement. My basement is really small. But the really creepy thing, the really scary thing that happened, wasn't that. My house has two floors and it isn't that big. My toilet is super small and it's next to the basement door. When I was younger, I was really scared of the dark and I was holding my cat downstairs to go to the bathroom when I needed to and turn the light on because my cat brought me comfort. The scary thing that happened was it was two or three in the morning and it was really rare that I would ever wake up to go to the bathroom. My mom was often awake, but not that night. When I got down and started to walk to go to the bathroom, at the exact moment that I passed the basement door, my Buzz Lightyear doll started shooting and talking. I immediately went to the bathroom and I don't remember how much time I stayed in there. Even when I was in the bathroom, it was doing those noises and I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. At some moment, it was almost like the sound was getting closer and coming upstairs. I don't know if I was just hallucinating because I was really scared or if it was real. The problem is that I really don't remember how I got out of there. I really don't. I know that I probably would have just run up the stairs to get out of there as soon as I could, but I don't remember coming out of that bathroom or if the toys stopped talking and shooting, but I do remember how scared I was. It was horrible to know that I was the only one awake, but at least I was okay and nothing dangerous happened to me. But it's still the worst night that I've ever had. When I was younger, I used to collect porcelain dolls. They were my jam something fierce, and I got them for any sort of gift giving holiday and just because. I had over 200 of them, ranging from brand new from the store to very old from thrift shops and tag sales. So of course some of them were haunted. For the most part, they weren't bad though. One really liked a little chair I had a different doll in and would constantly knock it out of it until I put her in it, even though she didn't fit so well. And another that was really old but very pleasant to have around was kind of like a guardian. I felt so much safer with her in my room. But then there was him. Boy porcelain dolls are hard to come by. So when my stepmom found this cute magician boy at the store, she snagged him for me for some holiday. Now, he was brand new, like fresh from the store, never been opened, and there were more like him. He specifically wasn't special or odd or anything like that. I was thrilled to have him. He had a little stool that his little top hat sat on. He wore a standard little boy outfit with a generic starry magician cape and a black wand with white tips that tied to his hand to make it look like he was waving it. I put him on a shelf that was by the foot of my bed and next to the door, facing out into the room, not at my bed. One of the few open spots I had left for my ever-growing collection. That night, I had trouble sleeping and I had these weird, scary dreams. Nightmares aren't that unusual for me. I used to have them a lot when I was younger, but these were different than my usual ones. Dark and malicious, but still not abnormal. In the morning, he seemed to be facing my bed a bit more than before. I chalked it up to forgetting how I had placed him. Whatever, it was fine. The nightmares continued though, getting worse over the next several nights until I just couldn't handle it anymore. I'd wake up from something horrific and feel something malevolent staring at me from the doorway of my room, which was basically at the foot of my bed. Somehow, I just knew that it was the magician boy. He gave off this terrible vibe and the area around where I kept him just felt wrong. I finally told my stepmom what was happening and that I thought it was the boy and that I didn't want him anymore. 
he was too scary. She didn't disbelieve me, but she also said that I was overreacting and that since boy dolls were so hard to find, she would take him. I said yes, but I thought he should just get out of the house altogether. So she brings him downstairs to her room and sets him with the rest of her dolls, also on a shelf between her bed and the door. That night, she's all snuggled up with her son, who I want to say was about three or four at the time they shared a bed, when he wakes her up in the middle of the night, a little spooked. She asked him what was wrong, and he points at the door and says, Mama, who's that? I don't like him. The doll was stored in the attic the next day and sold on eBay a few days later. The weird nightmare stopped once he was gone, and the scary man was never seen again. Good luck, whoever bought him. My aunt has always been a lover of creepy things. She likes gory, spooky, haunted things. She's sort of the lovable oddball of the family. She's always been crazy about these things called living dead dolls. For those of you who don't know what they are, they're just terrifying looking collectible dolls, basically purchasable nightmare fuel. She had bought a bunch of them and had them on display in her home. I've never been a fan of dolls, let alone ones meant to be scary. So this story creeps me out a lot. She ran into some financial trouble and decided to start selling things on eBay to make some extra cash for bills. As much as it broke her heart, she decided to sell one of her more popular living dead dolls on eBay. Almost immediately after she posted her doll, there was an offer. She said her goodbyes, boxed up the doll, and mailed it. No problem. A week or so later, she got the box back in the original packaging she sent it out in, but with a note saying undeliverable address, meaning she must have written it down wrong or it wasn't an acceptable place to deliver a package. My aunt figured it was just a spelling error and didn't think anything of it. She didn't open the package, she just put it in her closet. She went on eBay to try and contact the buyer. To her surprise, when she logged on, she already had a message from the buyer saying how she got the doll and how much she loved it and couldn't wait to brush its hair. She also described the doll in correct detail. My aunt was pretty freaked out. To this day, she still hasn't opened the package. It's just sitting in her closet. Edit. As a special Christmas gift, my aunt finally let me open the box. The doll was in it. Okay, so this is a story that took place when I was around eight years old in my neighborhood. I was next door neighbors with my best friend, Alex. We both went to the same school and always hung out every day after school. One day, I was bringing my Nintendo 64 to his house so that we could play together. Once I got into his house, his uncle was there watching the television so we couldn't use it. Today, I now know that he wasn't his uncle because my older sibling, who knew Alex's older sibling, told me that his parents rented out rooms to random people from their original hometown. So the uncle was just a random stranger from out of the country. He told us to go into his shed and search for an extra TV. So we opened the shed and started searching. We found an older television, but we couldn't use it. Then something started moving all the things around. We thought it was a rat, so at first we didn't mind. But then we heard laughter, something so scary that I tried to leave, but Alex told me not to worry. 
We kept searching around for the laughter, and we eventually found this one doll that was around two feet tall. It was torn and battered, so we figured it was just broken. We just sat it down and decided to go hook up the television we'd found in his room. We played for a while until his uncle left the house for food and his parents were at work, so we were home alone. We started hearing noises at the house, but figured it was nothing. But then we heard the laughter. The doll was moving around the house carefully, which we saw through the small peak underneath the closed door. The doll was looking for something, which was probably us. We were both freaking out, but we knew we had to get away from the house. We opened the window and jumped out and ran toward my house. Somehow, the doll managed to look at us as we were running away through the window and just laugh. We stayed at my house all afternoon until his parents came home. Ever since that day, I've always had experiences, weird things at my friend's house, like having YouTube videos end abruptly and start playing other random things, like clown videos. I think it's a serial commercial from the 70s. I ignored all of these weird signs for the rest of my childhood, and recently we met up for a while since departing to different high schools. Somehow the topic of the weird things was brought up, and I asked if he remembered all those things. He did remember, which now makes me want to share the story, because apparently it wasn't just my imagination. So let me start with some background information first. My mom and dad have been serving as missionaries in Ecuador for many years and currently are serving in a spiritual stronghold in a small town on the coast. My parents, in all their years as missionaries, haven't encountered many paranormal or demonic experiences, but there was one out of two experiences that kind of freaked my dad out. This story began around the time that my brother was six and I was just a newborn. My dad was driving the family home when my mom wanted to pull over to a small shop that was owned by a woman. The woman was selling homemade household items such as woven bread baskets, carved wooden sculptures, blankets, and things like that. My mom spotted a small doll that looked like an Otavalo woman one of the indigenous people groups of Ecuador. She bought it and showed it to my dad. My dad wasn't too sure about the little doll when he first saw it. He got a weird feeling in his gut once we got back on the road. A few days later, my mom hung the little doll up in front of the kitchen sink window. My dad still had that feeling in his gut, but continued to ignore it. As the day turned into night, my dad woke up from his sleep and glanced at the clock. It was one o'clock in the morning and he decided to go to the kitchen to get a cold glass of water. As he entered the kitchen, he paused and stared at the little doll hanging in front of the window. The doll was totally still as it hung and stared back at him. My dad rolled his eyes and turned his back to open the fridge and get the jug of water. As he was getting his glass of water, and was putting the jug back in the fridge, he glanced back at the doll and his heart almost stopped. The doll was swinging back and forth all by itself. There were no windows open or any air draft within the house. The house we lived in had no central air system like American houses do. We had air units in each bedroom along with ceiling fans so there was no way that any air was making the doll swing back and forth. My dad was still in shock as he stared at this doll. Then the doll swinging started to pick up its pace, and then it started violently spinning around in circles. My dad thought it was going to fly off or break the string that it was hanging from. As the spinning around progressed, my dad remembered not to be afraid of such things so he literally drank from his glass of water and walked out of the kitchen calmly, even though his heart was beating like crazy. He didn't want fear to be picked up by the doll, 
And so as he walked back to the bedroom where my mom was, he prayed and asked God for protection. He also checked on my brother and I before going to bed. The following morning, he told my mom what he experienced and my mom was horrified. That very day, they took down the doll, prayed over it against any evil that might have been within it, and wrapped it up in several plastic bags before throwing it away in the trash that was going to be taken out that day. Since that experience, my parents are much more careful with what they bring into their home. And if they do buy something like that, they pray over it to cast out any evil or demonic spirit that might be lurking inside. When I was younger, I would go visit my grandparents all the time. They lived in a one-floor house with an unfinished basement. I never liked it down there. It felt small for a big basement. There was a little door down there that was for storage, and I always got a horrible feeling when going close to it. Let me add that this was a newer house that was about six years old. Now, during the time that I was about six or seven, I felt so uncomfortable going down there. Even when I was with someone, I didn't like it. I remember going down there with my grandma to help with something. She had to run upstairs because someone rang the doorbell and she said she would be right back, even though she knew how I felt about being alone down there. But I nodded and said, okay. She was gone and I was alone and I started to get a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I didn't move and I didn't want to. Even though the lights were on now, it still just felt wrong. Now this is where everything started happening and it still gives me chills. The lights started to flicker and I started to hear noises and what sounded like talking. It wasn't coming from upstairs though it was coming from the storage room. I heard somebody say my name, and this is the part that really freaks me out the most. The voice sounded like my grandma, but I was confused because how am I hearing her from the storage room when she's upstairs? I didn't want to move, but me being the curious one I am, I started moving toward the storage room door. The closer I got, the worse the bad feeling became. When I got to the door, the lights turned off in the basement. I wanted to run upstairs and hide, go home somewhere that wasn't the basement. I heard my name again for the second time, my grandma's voice asking me to open the door to help her. So I did, and I regret it. I couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. And at first, I couldn't hear anything anymore. But then I heard this faint laughing that felt like forever. But then the laughing stopped and the lights turned back on in the basement. And I felt a little bit better with them back on. On the downside, I could now see into the little storage room. I saw a small clown doll and my grandma hates clowns with a passion and wants nothing to do with them. So why there's a clown doll, I have no idea, but it was certainly not my grandma's doing. Then the lights turned on in the storage room. I saw red that looked like blood all over the place. I screamed and blacked out. And the next thing I knew, I was laying on the couch. My grandma was looking at me and asking me if I was okay. I have no idea if that was all real or if I had passed out earlier and it was some kind of dream, but it sure as hell felt real. If you have any ideas as to what I experienced, let me know. So I was going to my sister's graduation at Binghamton University, 
and my family rented out a well-priced Airbnb for two nights. The only one that had five bedrooms, because extended Chinese family. It was a Victorian era house, completely decked out with Victorian American aesthetics. Trinkets, paintings of serious children, photos of even more serious people, ornate flower wallpaper and dolls. Many dolls. We were picking out bedrooms, and no one in the family wanted the room with the creepy dolls. I'm not superstitious, and I didn't see the room, and I didn't understand the gravity of the situation. So I was like, sure, I'll take the room with the dolls. You see where this is going. As midnight approached, I got tired, even after being energized by a tiny bite of baklava and an espresso. So I was the first to go to bed. I went into the room and saw the dolls. They were locked inside a glass case, all facing the bed. I was like, um, okay, don't be silly. Also, you're a brave trans girl and they're probably more afraid of you than you are of them because you're something they've likely never encountered before. Silly thoughts. I decided to take out my black ebony handled open L pocket knife and sleep with it at the nightstand so I would have some protection. I watched YouTube for a while, turned off the lamp and went under the covers. I felt the doll staring, but my rational side told me that it was all in my head. By 3 a.m. I was half conscious, slipping in and out of pure unconsciousness. While I was in a dreamlike state, I was aware of everything going on around me. The dolls staring. Were they next to me? I was afraid to open my eyes. I blinked. And I thought, it's okay, I have protection. I didn't dare look at the ebony handled knife on the nightstand. I was afraid that I would see a doll next to me. Then I remembered statistically, armed victims of assault tend to have their weapons taken away and used against them. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get stabbed to death. It was at that moment that I heard vividly in a playful childlike voice, it would be my heart's desire. I immediately became alert, like R2-D2 rebooting after being in low power mode alert. Adrenaline rushed through me. I heard a ringing in my ear as my awareness went from zero to 60 in a split second. I stayed like that until the sun started to rise at around 5 a.m. That was when I fell asleep. When I woke up, I dreaded having to sleep there again for yet another night. The next night I thought, you know what? Violence begets violence. So I slept with my pocket knife in my bag instead. I fell asleep and slept through the night. So for slight context, I'm 22, and as my mom was pregnant with me, my grandfather passed away from lung cancer. The only thing he ever got me was this little clown doll that was supposed to hang over my crib. When you pull down the clown's legs, they stretch out, the whole body does, and it plays the little music box style song as it winds itself back up. The tune slowly stops over the course of about two minutes as the clown slowly goes back up to where it started. Now, I know this already sounds like a cheesy horror story setup, but stick with me. When I was a child, maybe seven or eight years old, I used to have the clown hanging from the metal curtain tiles back in my room, probably because I was too young to have read or watched it. But one night, my mom walked up the stairs and into my room while I was asleep because the clown was playing its song, but it hadn't had its legs pulled down. It apparently played for about five minutes, abruptly stopped and never wound down. I do remember that my mom had recorded it on her old flip phone and showed me in the morning. We found out later in the day that on that night, my great grandma had passed away. So my grandfather's mom. My mom is super adamant that it was her dad sending some sort of signal. 
but I would be interested to know what you guys think. This happened when I was about nine or 10 years old, and I was really into soft stuffed animals. My step-grandma was rich and pretty close with my sisters and I and lived close to us. So we would see her and my grandpa quite often and she spoiled us. We went to a store, not a secondhand store or anything, but I don't remember what store it was. There was a shelf of lambs with cute outfits covered in plastic flowers with what I think was actual wool covering them. They were very cute and soft and I immediately knew that I had to have one. I asked my grandma and she gave it to me. I was delighted and I brought the lamb everywhere I went for a while. After a few days, I sat the lamb on top of a little toy chest at the foot of my bed. One morning, I was asleep, but I woke up to the sun streaming in on my face. I looked around my room and my lamb was pacing around next to my bed. It looked like it didn't have much control over its limbs, so it was kind of stumbling. It circled around and eventually it was facing me. It looked me in the face and I don't remember anything after that. I woke up later and the lamb was where I had left it, sitting on the toy chest at the foot of my bed. I was so afraid that I buried the lamb under all of my other stuffed animals inside the toy chest, and I tried my very best to never look at it. A few years later, my grandma died of leukemia, and I felt extra guilty about the lamb since it was a gift from her. But I told my mom about what happened, and she said I should just get rid of it. I donated the lamb to Goodwill, so hopefully it's not actually possessed because then I just made it someone else's problem. Probably everyone reading this is convinced that it was just a dream. And you're probably right. But if it was, it was one of the most vivid dreams I have ever had. It took place in my bed where I was lying down. My messy room had all the same things sitting on the floor as in real life. And every time I saw the lamb after it happened, I got a weird feeling and just got really uneasy and sick. It could have been a dream, but it was so creepy that it still freaks me out to this day. When I was around seven, I got this stuffed animal named Sparky. I slept with Sparky every night and would carry her around everywhere. Anyway, a few years ago, one random day, I just couldn't stand to be around her. Every time I was, I would get super cold and I would get this really bad feeling. So I left her behind my bed for a few months and eventually I forgot about her. Then, when I finally got her from behind the bed, she seemed normal again. That was a few years ago. She's beside me right now, and she's normal. I randomly thought a few minutes ago about when she seemed off, so I asked my pendulum if she had a spirit or something attached to her a few years ago, and it said yes. Also, I asked if it was an evil spirit, and the pendulum said yes. I just thought that was interesting so I wanted to share. Let me start off by saying that my family and I have always thought of this to be a super strange phenomenon, but to this day, I have never been able to understand what the heck happened. When we were younger, our cousin Daniela always talked to us about how these two dolls she had were possessed and plotting to kill her. Well, one of the dolls belongs to her, 
and the other was a porcelain Tinkerbell doll that belonged to her older sister. They shared a room, by the way. We never paid mind to it because she had a wild imagination. Fast forward into months, maybe even a year, into her telling us these stories. One weekend, my older sister and I stayed over at her house. It was four of us upstairs playing in their room, and we knew to stay on Daniela's side of the room and away from her older sister's side. It was a small room though, and we were children, so we didn't listen. Somewhere in the middle of being all over the place, we knock down the Tinkerbell doll and it completely shatters. Immediately, we all freak out because we were told by our aunt to stay away from that side of the room and we completely disobeyed her. Not to mention, my aunt was terrifying, so we knew we were in for a beating. We try to think of ways to fix it, but there was no way. It was completely shattered. So, realizing we're screwed, we start crying. We go downstairs and in tears, we apologize to our aunt for disobeying her and breaking the doll. She starts yelling at us and then decides to go upstairs and clean up our mess. Well, here's where things get weird. Once she gets upstairs, she starts screaming at us again, but this time she's calling us liars. We run upstairs and come to find out that the doll isn't shattered. It's completely intact and back to where it was before. We immediately look at each other with our jaws dropped. It was then that my cousin Daniela went from being scared with us to almost being relieved and starts saying, I told you guys I wasn't crazy. The doll's possessed. I told you, I told you. The rest of us ran out of that room and called for our parents to come and get us. After that day, we refused to go back in that house. A few years ago, I was part of a local paranormal investigation team. On one investigation, the client had several dolls among her possessions, many of which were in a display case in the living room. Upon arrival, we were doing a walkthrough to determine the hot spots for us to check out, decide camera placement, and to get some basic background information. While in the living room, the client invited us to check out a few specific dolls from the case that held particular interest to her. Three dolls were taken out of the case and looked at by a few of our team members. The one that caught my attention the most was wearing a dress and cape, had beautiful curly hair, and was about six inches tall. When I was done checking the doll out, I handed it back to the client to be returned to the case. After the normal settling that takes place after the doll is back in its spot and the case was closed, I started to turn away from the case. Two other team members and the client witnessed the next thing that happened. The doll reached out toward me as though it wanted me to pick it back up. I almost ran out of the house, but I reminded myself that I was there to help determine what was going on there. Some things were debunked as normal and other things were determined to be paranormal or unexplained. But that doll freaked me out. Two months ago, I purchased this doll. I found it at a Goodwill store and I purchased it as a Halloween decoration. Ever since, I've got some really off-putting issues going on. I started to notice whenever I had it out, like when I bought it and set it on my dresser, I would have nightmares. And I just had this weird feeling, so I would shove it in the drawer when I woke up in the night. One night, I had sleep paralysis. This happens to me every now and then, 
but this was the first and only time it ever involved another person. In my sleep paralysis, as I stared paralyzed at the wall, I heard a voice say, wake up you two. I instantly got chills and eventually was able to get up and realized that I had put him back on the dresser. I've never been so scared. Even with all of this, it still felt like a fluke or just me psyching myself out. Until tonight. Tonight, my family and I were moving out. For three months, we'd had some dry flowers hanging from a pot rack in the kitchen. I pulled this puppet out of my drawer because I was emptying it and I put it in the garage. At 6.50, we left the house to take the second truckload. Nothing abnormal. At 10.12, we got back home to find the flowers that had been in the same place for months on the floor. I told the people who helped me move. Later, my cousin sent me a picture he had taken of the puppet. I didn't realize they were playing and messing with him downstairs. When I looked at it, I realized that the flowers had fallen almost if not exactly where my cousin had taken that photo. Please advise. Maybe I'm just psyching myself out, but this is really weird. When I was in the first grade, I had just moved to a new foster home. I started having this nightmare every night about the devil doing really bad things to me. I remember him bringing me into his room. I remember everything. It's still vivid in my mind at 19. The weird part about it is I had an aerial doll that would move around my room ever since I had started getting this dream. It had a button on the back that would make her sing. Sometimes I would wake up with her singing on my bed when I remember putting her somewhere else. Ever since it started moving around, I've started putting it in places that I would absolutely remember putting it. On my bookshelf where my teddy bears were. Even in other rooms. But every single day, for months, when I had that dream, she would be laying somewhere else. Most of the time, in my bed, singing. The last night that I had the dream, I woke up to her walking toward me on my bed singing. I freaked out and ran out of the room. It's always insanely vivid in my head and I only started telling people as an adult because I didn't know how to tell people when I was a kid. I have no idea what that was, but it still affects me to this day. I bought a haunted doll on a whim, and it's been an interesting week. Esther, which is what the previous owner said her name was, has been here since Wednesday, and we've already had little things happen. Most notably, if we leave the lights on as we leave the house, they're off by the time we get home. Doors that were closed open just slightly, as though somebody's peeking inside doors that were open are closed. Also, I've watched a doorknob turn and a door open twice when I'm fully awake, standing at my desk at the time. My wife and I will have a lot of conversations along the lines of, did you come home during the day? Nope, I've been at work all day. Okay, because I know I left the bathroom light on and the door closed but I came home to the light off and the door open. The bedroom door is open too. This is notable because we always keep our bedroom door closed. We have an old cat that likes to sneak in and do their business under the bed. In my office during the winter, I run a space heater to keep it warmer for the reptiles. I do keep the door ajar so that the cats and dogs can come in and out. This morning, I most certainly left the door open as there were three cats and a dog in here sleeping. When I got up, I was asked if I knew that I had trapped three cats and a dog in my office by shutting the door. I said I left the door open before I went back to sleep because I knew they were in there. 
Oh, well, the door was open when I got up. There's been one instance of, are you humming? What? No. Well, someone's humming. We've also had numerous incidents of a light being turned off that we had left on. And this morning, I woke up to the bedroom ceiling fan being on when it had most certainly been off when I went to sleep. It takes the wall switch and pulling the light chain to have it on, and, well, no lights. And I'm 100% sure that I didn't do that before I went to sleep. Nothing scary, can't say I've ever felt unsettled by any of the above, because I grew up in a house with the ghost of my great-grandmother, and I'm sort of used to things like that. I'm not worried about anything actually scary happening. The woman that we got the doll from was very clear that the spirit attached was pretty much nice, very motherly, which I suppose explains turning off the lights that we leave on. Apparently it's a middle-aged woman who's really more interested in plants and pets than in causing problems for or scaring or playing tricks on people. The worse she does, according to the lady who sold her, is hum a little random tune and occasionally manifest physically. Or if you have plants in one area of your house, the doll might move to sit near them, which I haven't seen, but like I said, we have heard the humming. That's partially why I settled on that one. Just to err on the side of, I don't want a doll moving around the house, we have dogs that might mistake it for a toy, I put a small succulent garden next to her, and I set her near a window where she can see the garden we have in the yard. Not that it's much of a garden in the middle of winter, but, you know. The most surprising part is that I am completely not creeped out by the doll, and dolls usually leave me feeling very unsettled in general, haunted or not. So far, I think we'll keep her. And this is my story about a haunted doll named Claire. She's been featured in the book Haunted Objects, Stories of Ghosts on Your Shelves, on a couple of paranormal podcasts, and the TV show Haunted Towns that aired on Destination America back in 2017. You can still catch reruns of the show on Travel Channel every now and then. She was in the season finale, featuring McDonough, Georgia. Here's my story. As an eight-year-old child, I was given an old porcelain doll by a very dear family friend, Miss Marion. She was all the time coming across things and giving them to me. This doll was the last thing she gave me. I was never really into dolls at all growing up, but I took the doll and placed her in my room in a small, child-sized rocking chair. The chair sat next to my closet and dresser, right beside my nightlight. The doll was very pretty. She was dressed in a peach and cream colored dress with an apron and petticoats. She had little black Mary Jane shoes that, when removed, showed her delicately painted toenails. Her body was soft. Only her head, forearms, hands, and legs from the knee down were porcelain. Her lips were pink, and her dark brown hair hung in slightly frizzed and now loose curls. Her eyes were brown, her cheeks were a rosy peach color, all like mine. Miss Marion made a point of saying that the doll reminded her of me, which is why she gave her to me. From the moment that that doll, which I named Claire, came into my house, things began to happen. I was always uneasy with Claire. I never wanted to touch her, and when I played in my room, it was as if she watched me. It wasn't anything to panic about, but I do remember feeling like if I did something wrong, she might actually tell on me. How ridiculous does that sound? My first real occurrence that I remember was when I was reading in my room, ghost stories actually, when a musical carousel horse that sat on my dresser began to play. Not just a couple of notes like old mechanical music boxes will do from time to time, but like somebody just wound it up fully. I sat stunned 
and stared at the little horse as it moved up and down in time with the music. Then it just stopped. It didn't wind down, it just stopped. I was a pretty brave kid. I didn't run and I didn't tell my mom. I used to see a shadow man in the hallway or in my parents' bedroom door all growing up. And if she didn't believe me about that, she wouldn't believe me about something as mundane as a music box playing on its own. So I just let it go. The next thing that happened was the voice. For several nights and on into these years, I was awoken by what sounded like a woman, inches from my face, shouting my name. Jill, wake up. I would jump up and sit up to find my room empty. Those happenings died down after a few months. She then started to plague my little brother with the same thing, and now that he and I are grown and gone, she's moved on to my dad. The little things started to get to me. I'd put something in a certain place, only to find it later on on the floor or on my dresser, right next to Claire. All of my missing items eventually turned up around her. Once, a ring ended up in the pocket of her apron. Books would fall off my shelves, and a perfume smell would sometimes fill my room. The doll itself didn't smell at all, but the air around her would. My catalyst to finally getting Claire out of my room was the night I woke up after hearing thumping around in my closet. I opened my eyes, sat up in bed, and of course my eyes were drawn to the nightlight where Claire sat. I realized that it wasn't coming from in the closet, but near it. As I watched, the source of the thumping became clear. The rocking chair that Claire occupied was rocking on its own. I had thick shag carpet, so there was no way this thing was just rocking by chance. If that wasn't enough, Claire's feet, which were both turned to the side facing opposite each other, slowly straightened themselves to both be pointing directly up. Twenty years later, this part still freaks me out. Then, she turned her head, which was quite impossible to do since it was attached, fixed to her cloth body. She looked toward me and every music box in my room, four of them to be exact, started to play all at once. I was frozen with fear. I didn't feel endangered so much as I just felt scared of what was happening. I screamed for my mom and dad. The music stopped, but Claire maintained her gaze in my direction. And this is why I hate dolls. Even after that, I couldn't get rid of Claire totally. I ended up stuffing her in a box in the back of a storage closet. She's still there as far as I know. So is the woman who now screams my dad's name in the middle of the night. While I think she explains some of the oddities that happen in my parents' house, I don't think she's the tie to all of it, especially the shadow man. My friend Tim Weisberg is a paranormal radio and podcast host of the show Spooky South Coast, and also is an author. He asked me to lend him Claire once. He heard my story back in 2011. I obliged and Claire went to stay with him for a few months. He wrote about his experiences with Claire while she stayed with him in the book Haunted Objects that I mentioned earlier. Temperature changes in the room that she stayed in, along with hearing voices, were two of his noted encounters. Claire also stayed briefly at the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast in 2012. The guys from the Haunted Towns show encountered some things in my parents' house while Claire was with them. I was really young when this happened. I don't even think I'd started going to school yet. I don't remember much about that stage of my life, but I still think about this experience to this day. It was near Christmas, and there was a doll that my younger sister and I looked forward to playing with every year. It was an angel, where if you pressed a button, she would sing Silent Night. 
The thing is, though, once I was done playing with it, I had to return it downstairs. My parents eventually realized that we had forgotten to bring it down, so I was sent upstairs alone to retrieve it. As I went up to my room to get it, I heard the doll sing Silent Night. The doll had a history of going off on its own, so I thought nothing of it. I went up and opened the door. My room was completely dark at the time, but when the light from the hallway came on, it shined on the pitch black figure of a little girl who was playing with the doll. The girl immediately turned her eyes on me and I stared back at her, shocked. My vision blurred and my ears were ringing and the next thing I knew, I had to pick myself up from the ground. Nobody seemed to notice that I hadn't come back downstairs. Confused and unable to comprehend what had happened, I would just go downstairs with the doll, seeing as the girl had left. I returned the doll and carried on with my day because I had no idea what had happened. It wasn't until I looked back on it when I was older that I realized just how terrifying that was. So, I know this is really weird, but I have always been obsessed with the idea of having a haunted item. So I went on eBay and I did a very thorough search of trusted sellers and stores where I might buy haunted items. I eventually settled on my doll Evelyn because the seller stated that the vessel was inhabited by the spirit of Evelyn, who died at age 17 and had hopes of going to college and being a teacher. I felt a connection to her there, because I am currently a senior at university, and I'm about to start working as an English teacher. I hope to read to Evelyn often and ask her advice for my lesson plans. I even fantasize about giving her a place in the classroom to sit so she can still achieve her dreams. Update. So the first day and night with Evelyn, and I only have a couple of out-of-the-ordinary things to report. First off, my cat won't stop rubbing against the doll or sniffing it. And secondly, I fell asleep last night with my TV on, watching South Park on Hulu, which means that my DVD player was also on. I woke up at 1am to both of those things being shut off. Now I know that there's probably a logical explanation for that, but honestly, I'm kind of hoping it's just her. Update Night 2 Nothing happened last night that I know of, except that I woke up at 2am for no reason, but that's becoming typical for me anyway. Today as I was getting ready for class, I turned on a paranormal story time on YouTube. Right after, my door that had been shut opened by itself about a quarter of the way. My cat and I both shot our heads to the door when that happened to look. And I know y'all will probably say I'm stupid for this, but I used the Ghost Radar app, and it said that there was an entity right in the direction of where my door is. I'll let you know if there are any further updates. About a week or so ago, I received an Elmo doll. I was on vacation, visiting a few relatives, and my 90-year-old great-aunt gave me this red Elmo plush. At first, everything was normal about it, nothing out of the ordinary. However, the activity began when I returned back home. I placed the doll on my bed and lie down to sleep for the night. During the night, I began to see shadows moving across my room and a feeling that I was being watched. Of course, I at first thought I was just imagining things, so I brushed it off. The next night, however, things started to get weird. The number of shadows moving around my room increased, and I felt like there was something standing over me, watching me. I put two and two together and grabbed the doll. 
my stomach began to feel nauseous. A sense of anxiety filled me when I held the doll, and I felt like a negative energy was being transferred into my body. I immediately removed the doll from my room and placed it in a different area of the house. I told my parents, but they just joke about it and think I'm crazy. But I swear there's something wrong with this doll, and I have no idea how to go about investigating it. I bought a little porcelain doll at the Salvation Army this past weekend. I used to collect them as a little girl, and it was cheap, so why not? I wanted something to scare the trick-or-treaters that came into work. Since I've had the doll, I've had a horrible time sleeping. My house feels strange, and when I'm up at night and alone, I feel uneasy. I'm sleeping with the covers over my head. Any small sound makes my heart flip, and I can't sleep very well. It reminds me of the terrible nights I had sleeping as a child and being afraid. Even during the day, when I'm alone and getting ready for work, I feel so off in the house. It's been the past few days since I've bought that doll and kept her in the house. Today I brought her into work, and I'm hoping that the strange feelings I have at home will subside. Maybe I'm just being jumpy, since it's Halloween, but I'm 26 and I haven't had these feelings since I was a child. Has anybody else had a similar experience? When I was younger, between the ages of 7 to 10, I lived in a small house in Missouri. We lived in a small town. Nothing was abnormal about the house. I mean, there were the normal house settling noises which would cause me to have nightmares frequently, but nothing else. Until this incident, the only weird thing that had ever happened was our keys had gone missing. When you walked in the door, there was a giant metal wood stove that we would put our keys on. They went missing for weeks. We destroyed the house looking for them. And one day, they just reappeared and nobody knew where they came from. Anyway, there was a doll back when I was younger called an Amazing Grace doll. She had holes in her ears so that she could hear you and she would turn her head to wherever the noise had come from and would say, Mama. Well, I loved this doll. I explicitly remember cleaning my room and propping Grace against the wall so she was sitting up. I laid down on my bed to read, and I heard the clicking she would make when her head turned. So I looked up and stared at her and got the normal mama that she would say after she heard something. So I tossed my book down and picked her up to make sure that she was turned off. She was. So I flipped her switch and then flipped it back to off, thinking that this was just a normal malfunction. I sit her back in her spot and plop down to continue reading. It's completely quiet. As soon as I start reading, I hear the sound of her head moving again and she says, Mama. So I went and took out all of her batteries. I was over it at this point, so I just kind of tossed her on the ground and got back into my spot. That's when she started clicking quicker. Her head was moving back and forth, back and forth, and she just kept saying, Mama, Mama. I took off. I ran to get my dad, and he saw it and decided that we would burn the little doll. We did, and nothing happened again to my recollection, but my nightmares got worse. This was when I was still religious, so I would put all my stuffed animals around me in a circle to protect me. I had a turquoise dream catcher, and I would pray every night for the nightmares to go away. They never did, until we moved. They weren't every day, but definitely several times a week. Regardless, I was very glad 
to get out of that house and away from that doll. This happened when I was in the fourth grade, during Christmas time, around 2014. I live in Salem, Oregon, which is relevant to the story. In downtown, there's this antique store called The Unicorn. We went there to get my older brother World War II stuff for Christmas, because he likes that kind of thing. It's a really big store for an antique shop, so like normal kids, my brother and I went off to explore. Around the front of the shop, past a couple of bookcases, was this kids section. It was mostly full, with old board games and those tin toys, like those red geese with blue hats. What I did find was this old doll with a sticker on its face, just all dirty and broken. It said, Cursed Doll, on this piece of paper, with a warning sign at the bottom. I don't really remember what the warning sign said. Being 10 years old, I just looked at it and called Bull, and then flicked the glass and told the doll that it needed Jesus. Later that night, I went to sleep and had a dream of a green face in a dark background that kept trying to eat me. I woke up all gross and sweaty, but I realized that the bathroom light was on. My room is connected to the bathroom, so it's not outside my room in the hallway like in most people's houses. So when I woke up, I could clearly see the light reflecting off my wall. I could hear the light switch being turned on and off, but the light was still on. Eventually the light turned off, but the switch kept on flicking. Then the banging on my wall happened, and it lasted for a good two minutes. It just kept getting louder and louder, and then all I remember is not being able to breathe and passing out. When I woke up the next morning, I asked my brother why he kept banging on my wall. He said that he was at a friend's house last night, so he couldn't have banged on the wall. That scared the crap out of me. I told my dad what happened, and he believes that I pissed off whatever possessed that doll or made it cursed. I don't really mess with that stuff anymore, but cool story, I guess. My uncle was such a sweet guy that for my 18th birthday, he gifted me with a creepy but adorable porcelain clown sitting on a swing. It had two red dots on the cheeks, a red nose, a frilly costume, and white gloves. It had a pointed hat and brown curly hair. What he didn't know was that I had an extreme fear of clowns, and I still do. I accepted it anyway because it was such a sweet gift. I hung it up on my curtain rod, kind of proud that he had even thought of me at all, because it was rare that he gave me presents. The first week was fine, but after that, weird things began to happen. I started to grow creeped out by this doll to the point where I wouldn't even get dressed in my own room. There were a few times where it would swing on its own. I never opened my window, so I know that it wasn't the wind and it wouldn't have been able to swing without some sort of force. Several times I would walk out of the room and come back in to find that the head had twisted to look outside my door. For a long time, I thought it was my family members playing a joke on me because they knew that I didn't like clowns, so I just grinned and put up with it. I also locked my door from the inside with one of those bolt locks, just in case. I did this for a couple of months. One morning, it was taken too far, and it was the last straw for me. I woke up and hit something with my hand. I turned my head to come face to face with the clown doll. I looked at the curtain rod, but it definitely was not there. The only way it could have been brought down was if you lifted the rod and took the doll off by the swing ring. I know for a fact that my family didn't do it, 
because my bedroom door was still bolted shut. I had had enough, and I took the doll and threw it in the big bin, and then put it on the verge for the bin man to come that day. I told my uncle that I had accidentally broken it when I was putting it away to paint my room. I actually regret doing that. I kind of wish I had kept it. I was creeped out by stuff like that when I was younger, but now, I love haunted stuff and creepy things. I kind of wish I had it hanging in my house. When I was about eight or nine, my entire family went to a quinceanera. I guess we were good enough friends with the birthday girl that we received the quince doll, which is basically meant to look like the birthday girl. To give you an image of what it looked like, imagine a doll with a white dress and curly hair. We kept it in the living room where I slept on the floor, which is another story. And my brothers and I always had some weird feeling about it like it was watching us. I'd say around three to four months of it being in the living room is when I started to notice weird things happen in not only the living room, but also in both of my brother's rooms. I'll start with my experiences first. Like I mentioned before, I used to sleep in the living room. I would lay down near my parents' door and I would start to hear the strangest noises coming from near the TV or near the small cabinet that we put the doll on display. From hearing things in the kitchen fall on the floor to hearing a little girl laugh on the couch, a lot of weird things started to happen. I pretty much tried to ignore all of this with tears in my eyes, doing what kids do when they're scared. I covered myself with a blanket, but one experience will forever haunt me, and I still get chills thinking about it. I was crying one night for Lord knows what. My brother tells me it's because I was claiming I heard voices near my ear. My parents didn't believe me and told me that I was delusional. He invited me into his room to sleep, and I jumped at the opportunity. Just before entering his room, I went to the restroom. It's literally right next to my brother's room. While I was in there, I felt someone's hand right on my shoulder. I immediately turn around and get freaked out. I hurried up and got out of there, but that wasn't the worst thing. I entered his room and slept on his bed while he just played on the PS3. I slept from maybe around 20-ish minutes to 30 before waking up to him coming in the room with food. I kid you not. The moment he sat down, the closet door swung open with enough force to hit the wall. We looked at each other in disbelief about what we just saw. My dad bursts in to ask what the hell was going on. We tried explaining it to him, but he just shook it off and told us to go back to sleep. He walked out of the room and my brother continued to play. We were trying our best not to talk about it when we hear the toilet just flush on its own, along with the shower curtain moving. Mind you, nobody was in there. We would have known since the door always creaks open and shut with a pretty distinct sound. That room, I'd like to say, is where most of the activity always happened. The guy that we let rent out that room always said he was scared of it, but because he needed a place to stay, he just dealt with it. That was my experience when I was younger, but now let me tell you about my older brothers. I'll start with the youngest of my older brothers, we'll call him Dave. Dave slept in the room on the other side of the house, completely away from the doll, but with a massive window that had a hole within the curtains. He had things happen in the afternoon, like tools being thrown from one side of the room to the other, the TV falling and unexplainable scratches on his chest. But the one thing that scared the heck out of me was that he had this dream. In the dream was the girl in the white dress. Let me clarify, not the doll, but a girl. This happened to both of my brothers. 
The dream started off normally, until he noticed the white-dressed girl at his school and went near her. She turned around and, as he remembers, she didn't have eyes. It was just black holes and she had a sad expression on her face. He woke up to my parents trying to calm him down. I remember being right outside his room, peeking in. He was legit crying his eyes out, and I've never seen him act that way before. I have another older brother, we'll call him Mark. I believe that he had the worst of it since he slept not even five feet away from the doll. He also had a dream about the girl in the dress and the doll as well. But his dream wasn't scary, just anxiety inducing in my opinion. All he remembers is sitting at the dinner table. The doll was not too far away from the table. It was right in front of the table if I remember correctly. The girl with the white dress was sitting across from him with the doll next to her. Apparently the doll was blinking and the girl was emotionless, not blinking whatsoever. This is when he started to hear a clock tick. It ticked and ticked and ticked until he suddenly woke up in a cold sweat. But the problem was, when he woke up, the doll wasn't in the cabinet. Instead, it was right in front of him. He screamed and threw it toward the closet, breaking the head of the thing. My mom came in and thought somebody had broke in. She saw the doll with the broken head on the floor. And the creepiest thing was that the doll was upright, with the head right behind it. While she was extremely angry, she was just glad that he was safe, and she threw the doll out. That was the end of it, really. A few more things did happen, but nothing as bad as what I just told you about. Needless to say, we're glad the doll is gone.